There we go. Um, I, I apologize for the wait. I made a gamble and I lost. So, uh, let me get my timer. Now that we're live, more people will be coming. Okay. You're all ready, guys? I don't even know if I'm ready. Uh, today was rough. Took a nap in the middle of it. <clears throat> Prepare your butts. <clears throat> Sup? Not much, Luke. How are you doing? I expect a 10,000 hour long stream. Yeah, I'd be dead. Just wait until they get an AI of me. I should have my guide ready again. Oh wow, it's right out of the box. I don't even have to go looking for it. The uh, shift tab just takes me right where I left off. All right. Naps are the best thing to ever exist. Wake up without even knowing what year it is. I wake up I wake up from naps and feel awful. Happy or sad or happy one today. We're doing ending too, so if if you know, you know. I probably should have put the trigger warnings in the in the description again, but <laughs> Happy? No, and I don't think ending two is happy. Doesn't do drugs in this ending. <laughs> oh god. Catch her snorting the paints. Alright, halfway to starting the stream for realsies. Or worse, she starts smoking her canvas, wraps it up, and just starts smoking it. I'm gonna finish part four. We're not even to part four. And we're not getting to it till Friday. Can you use the PNG? Yeah, I'm I'm just gonna use the PNG now because I don't know. I think I was looking back in the stream and it looked all wonky. I apologize for that. She starts drawing furry, not safe for work. I mean, she probably already does that. She seems like the type to do it. <clears throat> All right, one minute left. I want to see that gator pull out a pair of power claws on Skinwalker, you know? <laughs> I feel ya. That was a bad ending. Sleeping after that was hard. I like this. Nice. I like this too. And hello stream. 
Or have you seen the Pizza Tower mod? Yes, I just had that shown to me recently, but I've seen it way before that. I don't have Pizza Tower, but if people really want me to play the the Olivia mod, I wouldn't say no to uh, <clears throat> a Steam gift. <clears throat> I mean, in a world where everyone is somewhat furry, wouldn't it just be normal? <laughs> normal NSFW, probably. Oh wait, I'm going a few seconds over. We're already... Let me... Let me get started. We can take down our message of the day here first and foremost. We'll go to the gameplay. Oh, is TV on? TV is on, isn't it? Is it not? There we go. Pizza Tower, aka Manic as Hell. I think the intro animation with the mod installed is great. Thank you for the Wani streams. I won't be around for this one, but I'm still catching up. But it's great so far. Yeah, take your time. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get into Pizza Tower because I'm not I know this is probably divisive, but I'm not like a fan of Wario platforming type games. It definitely seems like a speedrunner bait game too, but if if someone wants to me to play the Olivia mod, I would not say no to taking a Steam gift for the game. Start from the beginning. All right, we got to get to the skater gator. Yeah, we're not getting a happy ending. Oh, I wonder if we'll see Vinny hang himself again. Run time. Yeah, we're speed running to ending two. <laughs> two! There was two heads! What the hell? I just noticed that. <laughs> she became a Hydra. Oh my god. Alright, time to draw the half part. No? jacket actually no we don't draw the we have to give olivia the points here so we do not draw the gator hold on to the sheet This one. Yeah, we need to invite Olivia for an Olivia point. You have to support Olivia for an Olivia point. No Inko points here. Even though I haven't seen the other one. That's going to be dialogue we're going to have to read for ending four. Mm-hmm. 
Bomb. Share Olivia for Olivia Point. There's my daughter Lucy. This one consult the others about Olivia. That will keep him from earning a point. Whoa, D Damien went to the back rooms. The bright side, we're one ending away from the good one. Yes, we are. Oh, we got shoved into the lockers. All right, uh, don't take the key will be an Olivia point. It's a non-answer. Alright, I'll miss another non-answer. Vinny hung himself again. Right, um, this is definitely an Olivia point. Right? Actually, this isn't even a this isn't even a living up point right here, but it is required for ending four. But we're gonna just skip it. Uh, I hope this isn't as bad as the previous one. What's the button to go backwards in the dialogue? You gotta scroll. If you scroll up, you go backwards. I feel like it's going to be a short stream. Well, it's okay. We could do a post stream, hopefully. All right. This this is the one that will... Uh, this is the one that sets us in there. Believe, yep. So... This one, Ben has the right idea, and we are locked in. Let's go. <clears throat> Gator zoom. <laughs> Zip zoom. Uh, Tucker improperly. Skip, 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 skip. Here we go. Here we go. I move to speak, but an overwhelming feeling of exhaustion falls over me as I recount the events of the last few days. While Mia was completely out of line the whole way through, it's true that we provoked her into doing what she did. If we had just come to scale her about this earlier, none of this would have happened. So that doesn't put some... So doesn't that put some of the blame on us? I look over at Mia, who is currently staring at me with an intimidating glare. I quickly shift my gaze to Ben, who seems to be offering me a supportive smile. Everyone got to see the gator ass back there. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Fine. I don't want to make this any bigger deal than it already is. I only blinded Mia with the camera flash because I thought she was hunting, hurting Olivia. Yeah, hunting Olivia. We were scared, so we ran away, and there wasn't any time to explain the situation. It was just a big understanding, Miss Scaler. That's all. Right. As Scaler considers my explanation, Ben shifts towards me and pats me on the back. His gesture of support is contrasted by the evil grin painted on the face of the crimson devil towering behind him. We all stand in silence as we await a verdict. Ahem. The principal stands directly in front of us now with an unreadable expression. In addition to the report itself, our Idakin left behind an account of what happened. In it, he describes Mia's actions as openly hostile and intentional. Could you blame her? She couldn't see anything, and she was in a lot of pain. 
In either case, it seems both parties are in agreement as to what has happened. Idikin didn't mention a motive in his report for some reason, but I suppose that clears it up. Besides, making a big deal out of this during the audit isn't such a good idea. Principal Scaler looks ready to object to the line of thinking, but ultimately says nothing. Now, I would like to give the benefit of the doubt, especially at a time like this, but given the extent of the destruction, I don't feel like I can do that. It would bring me no greater relief than to have you off my mind for a few days, Miss Moretti. But given both of your classmates' statements, you may not be fully to blame. I think a week of Saturday detentions to assist with cleaning up the hallways is in order. Huh? Miss Scaler, if I may. The principal sighs and nods. I spoke with the janitors about it. They all agreed that it could be done in a single day if they have enough hands. And they all have plans for December. It wouldn't be fair to bring them in and cancel their leave. Miss Scaler growls and, growls and rubs her temples. Right, right. In that case, Mia, Inko, you'll both get one Saturday detention to help repair the hallway. You are expected to arrive at 10 a.m. sharp and work on cleaning up the mess you made. Now, if three of you don't mind, please leave me be. I have more important things to focus on. She doesn't even look up at any of us. I turn towards Ben, who looks absolutely relieved. And Mia, who looks positively overjoyed. She skips out of the office without another word, leaving both Ben and I to stare blankly at each other for a few seconds. Eventually, we shuffle, shuffle out of the room together. All right, water break. <clears throat> well, I guess that's it. Damn it. Never got in detention before, but I find it hard to care much. Anyways, just want to go home. I to go see Olivia again. Inko, are you okay? My head turns half-heartedly towards Ben. No, not really. Look, man, I'm really sorry for what happened back there. But thanks for helping me out. I didn't want to make a big deal out of this since me and Olivia are both struggling. Fucking Ben, yeah? <laughs> we don't like Ben. Speaking of Olivia, is she doing alright? She's at home right now. Well, you ought to comfort her. She's going through a lot right now. You don't think I know that? I know you are too. You could use each other, especially after what happened. I'm already going to see her after school. That's good. I have to go, but thanks again, Inko. You really did me a solid here. Besides, detention isn't all that bad. That's not going to appear on your record. I can make sure of that. Uh... Thanks, Ben. Don't mention it. With a smile, the student council president nods at me and turns to leave. Before long, it's just me standing in the empty hallway outside of the office. You have to spit whenever you say his name. I'm not spitting everywhere, dude. <laughs> it's only lunch, and I've already wanted to, I already want to go home and fall asleep. At least Damien and Liz are probably waiting for me. After school, I took the metro back home to shower and put on some new clothes. As it turns out, my parents were really on, really were on a business trip for the weekend, as indicated by a sticky note on the fridge. Hmm. Well, I'm back at the pains regardless. Randy opens the front door to let me in. Ah, there you are. Damien mentioned that you'd be coming over later. We, could, we should ask Damien to spit in the face of Ben. <laughs> Fuck Ben, all my homies hate Ben. Say, Inko, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind shoveling the snow off of the driveway when you can. Would really appreciate it, and I'll even pay you a couple of bucks for it. No need for the payment, sir. As thanks for letting me come on come here unannounced again. Thanks a bunch, really. As Randy leaves, I collapse onto the couch and let my head rest against the comforter. God, that whole thing with Ben and Mia really took a lot out of me. The weight of my heavy thoughts drag my head sideways until I can see Olivia's bedroom door. My eyes linger there as I consider getting up to see her, or just giving her some time to come out. She has to know I'm here, right? She probably does. She also probably doesn't want to do her silly knee walk thing again. 
I wonder how mad she'd be if I caught it on camera. A presence then cuts off my view before sitting right next to me. Hey, you alright, Inky? You were kind of out of it at lunch. For a moment, I considered telling Damien about what happened. But honestly, the last thing I want to do is bring this sort of drama into what I could consider my safe haven. Yeah, I'm alright, Damien. Just had a rough time at school, and I'm hoping to take my mind off of it. Uh, that's pretty understandable. I mean, with what, what with everything that's been going on and all. If only you knew. In an attempt to comfort me, Damien pats my shoulder. Tell you what, I'll finish up my homework and then we can chill over a game of Rock Ring or something. That sound good? Yeah, that sound good's good. Sweet. Alone again. My stomach is a flutter with butterflies as I get up from the couch. Olivia's room is just a couple steps away, and each one stirs the butterflies even more. Once I reach it, I feel like I'm in the shadow of a colossal monolith. Come on, Inko, you just got a knock. Damn it, arm, just lift up. Stop shaking. Knock, knock. I'm awake, Uncle Randy. It's me, Olivia. I hear a quiet shuffling before Olivia speaks up, more loudly this time. Inko? Yeah, are you... okay? Decent? Damn you, brain. Can I come in? Yeah, just watch your step. It's time for the depressive alligator moment. My hand is still shaking as it makes contact with the knob. With a deep, calming breath, the butterfly starts slowing down and I'm able to push the door open. Depression and sea blackness. Olivia? The room is extremely dark and the only source of light is coming in from the entryway. I have to take my sunglasses off in an attempt to see through the darkness better. Olivia, the heck happened here? Why is it so dark? Is this still... No, it's still... This... New text. I make out Olivia's shape in her bed. It's a long story. Come sit on the bed. Don't you have a lamp? Can't you turn it on? I don't want to ruin it. The darkness really necessary for whatever this is? Yes. All right, geez. Take a few careful steps forward and stub my toe on the edge of the bed. I fall forward onto it, crunching onto something. Shit, Inko. Are you all right? Yeah. I have a better view now. Olivia sits in the middle of her bed, wrapped in her blanket. Surrounding her are piles and stacks of her old drawings and sketchbooks through the years. They're arranged in rings around her, and I've fallen into the outer ring. Whoops. Oh crap, sorry. Get up, get up! I carefully lift myself back up. There's not too much damage. Olivia shoes me off that part of the bed. What is all this? Actually, how is it so dark to begin with? Don't you have a wind... I can explain. Please do. Olivia inhales deeply. After you left, I had some time to think, to really think. It was just me and my thoughts, alone. Maybe a little too alone. Something within me just needed to come out, and I felt this needed to. Well, I was inspired to do this. Some act of defiance against the world, or something. I'm still figuring it all out. I feel kind of bad now, just leaving you all alone here. Sorry. I could have called out sick or something. There's no need to feel bad, though. I really needed this. Because after I got everything set up, I got to thinking. And I had all day to do it. Idi can put, a, put in a lot of effort on me. And he wouldn't be proud of me throwing a pity party for myself. So all this, I'm getting it out of my system. They're called performance pieces when someone does this sort of thing. It's all I can do, but I think it's enough. A performance piece. Olivia, this is amazing. You're able to keep striving onwards with your work. Thanks. I mean it, you're not missing a beat, not letting what happened get you down. And here I've been all day, all gloomy. I admire it. I guess you're right. That's one way of looking at it. Do you want to come out to the living room? 
No, I think I want to stay here a while longer. It still hurts. All right. Squeeze her head. <laughs> I squeeze her head. No, I squeeze her hand and head back to her door. I'll be out here for a while then. She nods and shuts the lamp off again. I shut the door and sit back on the couch. <clears throat> I'm sorry for squeezing your head, Olivia. I didn't mean it. I'm dyslexic. A performance piece. I never would have thought of that. Man, that really is something else. Inky. Hey, Vinny. I wave at Vinian and Damon. Damien. <laughs> the two brothers entering the living room behind me. I guess the room is back there. Man, do I have great timing or what? What ending are you going for? We're going for ending two. It says in the... It, I could point to the title of the video. It's in, it's in the title. <laughs> I take a moment to consider what he means when Vinny plants himself right in front of the tel television and begins pulling something from the cabinet underneath. Oh. You mean it's game time then? Yeah, man, it's game time. Damien takes the spot right next to his brother and helps him in setting up the large squat, wait, the large squat block of a console. Man, that thing looks pretty old and huge. Or do they have a generation one Xbox one or something? <laughs> okay, we're all set. Controller is tossed into my lap and I mar marvel at just how large it is. Uh, thanks, Damien. I would have liked to see a little bit more interaction with Inko and his parents. Yeah, that'd be nice. But I'm not much of a gamer. In fact, I never actually played anything more than some Flash games online. Nah, that's cool. We could play something simple until you get used to it, or... I don't want to be a bother, Damien. I'll be fine just watching for now. That's weird, Inky. You're weird. Oh, chill. Give Inko some time. He'll be playing once he sees how awesome it is. The young boy nods and focuses back on the screen. The screen flashes to a menu of some kind. Reclining deeper into the couch, I allow my mind to drift. He just falls asleep. The game's that boring, guys. <laughs> wow, he really went. I don't know how long my brain was off, only that it came back up. It came back when I heard the telltale noise of a door hinge opening. Looking in the direction of the noise, I see Olivia on her knees, ca casually shuffling along the floor to the couch. Hey, Olivia. The game pauses when I say that, and the two brothers also wave at her. Hey, guys. Dinner ready yet? Almost, little ace. Randy's shout came from the kitchen. How did he get there? Man, I must have spaced out for a while. Quick check in my phone says I've been in deep thought for at least an hour. Hmm, okay, the fish is ready, you guys. Fish? I didn't hear any cooking. It's gonna be raw sushi. That's not good, but probably maybe better than ending one, yeah. Man, oh man, I sure early. Yeah, you're, you're kind of late, but you're just in time. Nothing big happened just yet. I don't smell anything. Your kid's coming? Just a sec. Olivia and, Olivia and Vinny follow after Randy's voice without a word, while Damien quickly pauses his game and sets the controllers aside before motioning me to join them. I push myself up and trudge towards the kitchen. Inside, the Payne family is hurrying to sit at the dining room table. Even Olivia is struggling to help herself up into a chair, but a hand from Damien pulls her up. On the dining room floor table sits a silver tray of covered... Silver tray covered in raw fish, wasabi, bottles of soy sauce, and slices of ginger. Ever have sashimi, Inko? I'm actually very familiar with it. I'm surprised at my sudden turn of luck. Many times, actually. My family orders stuff like this on the weekends a lot. Hey, that's great to hear. Well, don't just stand there. Feel free to join us. I eagerly take a seat, starting to feel slightly rejuvenated. Hey, Zen. Everybody begins to pass out plates to one another, and we'll all and we all pluck pieces of salmon from the tray and place them onto our plates. 
five minutes in and everybody is joined the fish. I can't help but to notice nobody else is eating properly though. They soak their fish in soy sauce and the ginger seems to be eaten at random rather than used as a palate cleanser. Just to wanton wantonly eat this delicious meal like that. <laughs> Here comes the nerd emoji. I raise my voice to get the attention of everybody at the table. You know, you're supposed to be using the wasabi and soy sauce on the same piece of fish, right? On opposite sides, like this. I offer a demonstration. No kidding, good to know. And then the ginger slices are supposed to be eaten between pieces as in a way of cleansing your palate and aiding digestion. Come on, who has the time? Plus, I like the taste. If you're going to eat traditional food, you should eat it the right way. Damien smirks at me, and I can tell neither he nor Vinny has bothered to listen to what I have to say. At least Randy and Sophia have at least tried out the technique a bit, a bit uh, sloppily. And Olivia is looking at me with a bit of a pout on her face. Every time he does that nerd thing, he messes something up. Yes. What's wrong? We're not at a restaurant, Inko. Let them eat however they want. But the correct way ensures a balanced flavor. Maybe, but there's no accounting for taste, you know. Technique is the most important part of food like this. In some cases, it's even deadly if you don't follow in careful instructions. Ever heard of fugu sashimi? It's made from puffer fish, and if you don't prepare it right, it can be deadly. Good thing we're not eating puffer fish, then. Well, yeah, but it's the idea behind it. You're welcome to eat it however you want. Just let us enjoy the food, okay? Fine. Olivia gives me the gives me an earnest smile before returning to her fish. Power fist time. I spent almost the whole night playing to get an ending and end up getting ending four. That's great. My head hurts so much, but it was worth it. I'm glad you got ending four. It's a little disappointing to hear, especially since they don't get to eat this kind of food very often. It's kind of a waste if they don't eat it right. Let me grab a drink. <clears throat> After dinner, Olivia and the Payne brothers and I are all back in the living room. On the TV screen, two large robot-looking figures fire at one another with automatic weapons. No one's bothered to keep track of time, and we were all too enraptured by the pixelated entertainment before us. Which is how I missed my last chance back home. Mrs. Payne didn't look too upset, though. In fact, I think they expected me to spend the night again. Especially with how Randy's been so quick to pull out some blankets and pillows for me. Both of the parents insisted I stay, and it's not like I could realistically walk home. So once again, I'm staying over, and currently sat at the floor of the couch with Olivia, and we're both bundled up to stave off the chilly winter night. The soft, growling purr that Olivia makes when she's content has become the, has become almost therapeutic to me. So, how are you feeling? Hmm. I really enjoy spending time with everyone like this. Thank you for being here, Inko. I feel a lot better knowing you're with me. Same here. Her palms wrap around my left hand, and I give her a reassuring smile. Now we're doing ending too. As the hilarious and painful feeling of drunk dad coming home jokes. Don't spoil anything. In all honesty, I should probably go to bed now. I don't want to be tired and sad, you know? Yeah, I get it. Well, you could always join me in my room. Ooh, ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Say less. <laughs> uh, I, I couldn't. Randy would kill me. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You want to help me up? Oh, yeah, sure. Some careful movements in, in support of her tail. I help Olivia shuffle herself towards her room. I narrowly avoid stubbing my toe again as I set her down on the bed, and she quickly wraps herself in blankets. See you in the morning, Inko. You too.
we could have scored that night, guys. But at what cost? <laughs> I quickly make my exit and the door closes and close the door behind me, eager to hide the growing blush on my face. At this rate, I don't think I'll ever get used to this whole romance thing. Either way, I head back to the living room and fall on the couch, getting ready to pass out. All in all, today was pretty good. Morning in, mornings in the Paines residence were lively to say the least. Or maybe it's because it's a Saturday. That is to say, my weekend sleep schedule was, was cut far shorter than I would have liked. Mostly by Damien's little brother landing feet first on my chest and knocking the air out of my lungs. Again. Inky! That's the second time in a row. I sputter and sit up in an attempt to get back some precious oxygen. Vinny immediately sat on the pillow I would used. Morning, Vinny. The check of my phone says that it's half past seven. Four hours too early. The TV flickers to life, and Vinny starts flicking through the channels at a speed only he can comprehend. This is the hockey stuff, isn't it? Morning, Inko. Sorry about the wake-up call. It's Vinny's favorite season. Winter? Hockey. Well, let's see if... Is this skippable? It is! My god! As always, it's top of the line content. It's simply great on how much can be done with now with social networks and really giving a voice to the people. I consider sharing it with the others, but I don't want to ruin their fun. Uh, afterwards, I rejoin Damien and Vinny in the living room, both of whom are absolutely enthralled by the hockey game playing on the TV. With every hit of the puck or rogue shoulder check, the brothers explode with either excitement or in devastation. The two also take turns assaulting me with more hockey trivia than I'll ever be able to use, particularly about Vinny's favorite goalie. I hear a nearby door creak open. Olivia crawls out, crawls a tight, out crawls a tired gator, rubbing the sleep from her eyes. She helps herself up on the couch. Morning, sleepyhead. Welcome back to the land of the living. Morning, Livia. Livia's eyes are still closed. Mumbles out what sounds like a good morning. Sleep well? Uh, kinda. Couldn't fall asleep until 2 in the morning. Damien and Vinny start shouting in victory as the home team gets the final score. What a slap shot! Heard the excitement in the room. Watching hockey again? Sophia settles herself onto the recliner, opening up her laptop. And she goes to speak the newsletter, so this, we've been through this. Actually, I turn to Olivia and give her my undivided attention. Yes? Well, I was thinking, uh, you and me and all. My head tilts in confusion. Yes. A frustrated growl emanates from her clenched maw. You, me, somewhere, together. What? As her annoyance grows visibly on her face, I can't help but shy away. I fear she's going to snap. I fear she Whoa! My back hits the rug on the floor roughly as Olivia hovers over me on her hands and knees. Uh, Olivia? You, me, together, go somewhere? Wait. I saw an E1 comic where it's Olivia who pushes Inko down the stairs, which made me horrified but curious how things would end were it the case. Yeah, I saw that picture where it was the other way around. I only saw one picture where it was Olivia trying to hug Inko. I'm like, man, I wonder what's going to happen then. Are they going to be samesies now? Are they going to be twinning it up in their wheel uh, wheelchairs? <laughs> I'm sure someone's going to write a fanfic on that one. <laughs> Wait, does she mean like a date? Yes. Oh, I've never been on a date. I only know what I've seen in movies and shows and stuff. Well, uh, we're a couple now. And so this would be a regular thing. Just elbow Olivia in the face. Yes. Right. Sure. Yeah, a date sounds a good. Her tail waves happily behind her and her annoyance, annoyed face finally melts away into a smug satisfaction. 
uh, when I need a mod for that one for real. And we get an Olivia Scalps Ingo, Inko ending. I don't know if that's going to be this one or not. Don't spoil anything. I should probably put that on the text right on the top of the screen. No spoilers. In fact, maybe I should do that right now. Give me, give me a minute here. Let me cook. Spoilers. No spoilers. Oh, it's not done yet. Not done yet. There you go. You guys deserve it. <laughs> uh, so where do you want to go then? Oh, I got some ideas. Mm, okay. And you'll definitely love them. Of course. And I promise it won't be anything crazy expensive. I don't mind, Olivia. Great. Perfect. She polishes his bald head. <laughs> If it's needed, I will create a fanfic where Damien spits in the face of Inko. <laughs> she lowers herself onto me, wrapping her arms around me in a powerful hug that threatens my lungs and spine. I do my best to return the hug, but at best it comes off as me kind of petting her, ba petting her back with both hands. It seems to be enough, though, as I feel the rumbling purr she emits. Ending to Inko kind of seems distant. He seems airheaded. I mean, uh, technically, it, it's the point system, so technically he hasn't grown. Don't worry, I'm not going to spoil just here enjoying my game. Yeah, I think this is the first time I've seen you post here, Burn Sauce. Ahem. Shut up. We're having a moment, Damien. Yeah, a moment in the living room. Shouldn't you have it on your actual date? No, I'm making up for lost time. What? nothing you shut up too okay i'm too busy enjoying the feeling of her purring on top of me anyway i wish i could feel that i wish i could feel that grab a drink actually i'm gonna grab another bottle of water i'm gonna mute and i'll be right back Sorry about that. I had to reload my bottles. All right, let me check chat. Honestly, a roll slap would be interesting, like Inko being in the wheelchair. There was a there was a picture about that I saw where Olivia was walking, and it was Inko that was blind. That was pretty interesting. Hopefully this ending isn't bad. I don't know how much my heart can take. This is the last one. This is the last bad ending. Never seen this game outside a stream where they never finished it before you. Really? Love has no time, but it has a place, right, Inko? All right, let's continue. The rest of our day was spent in that living room, crowded around at the old TV. At first, Olivia kept playing a few games, but after a while, she swapped it over to a, to a comedy channel on cable. It was pretty fun to relax for a while, take her mind off the things and chuckle every now and then, and, and again at some bozo getting pranked in public. When the sun began to set, though, I decided I should head home. Go to Snoop Boru. <laughs> you should just post the Snoop... Well, I could post the Snoop Boru link for you guys. Give me a moment here. I will, I will grab the Snoop Boru, because I don't think anyone can just post links on my chat. I think this is the one. 
Yeah, Snoop Boru. Yeah, here's here's your art of stuff. Everything Snoot and Wani related. Always, always up to help a good old Snoop bro out. <laughs> I needed a shower and a change of clothes, and both of Damien's parents were still out. I felt It felt bad when I left Damien's place that night. Or rather, I felt bad looking at Olivia as I walked away from his house. It only grew worse as I went from the metro to my quiet neighborhood and ultimately our empty home. I remember this part. It's still, it's still new stuff, apparently. Seeing the small pile of letters at the front door made me realize what that feeling was. Loneliness. Maybe I should have just waited to ask the pains if I could spend the entire weekend. If I did that, would I be overstaying my welcome? I don't want to abuse their hospitality after all. Ping. Withdrawing my phone from my pocket, I see that Olivia's just sent me a new doodle. It was nice having you over. Despite the coldness in the house, Olivia's message brings some warmth to my heart. I had fun. Hopefully I can come over again soon. Still figuring out when we can go for our date. Pick your time. We have at least a week. Kicking my door closed, I head for my computer so I can continue talking to her online. Thank god he isn't an asshole now. He's just clueless. Occasionally, I search online for any forum or blog updates while she's gushing over her favorite anime. I lose track of how much time we spend in instant messaging and sharing videos, but by the time I check my computer's clock, I realize it's past midnight. Shoot, I'm gonna be exhausted tomorrow. Totally worth it. Wait, I kind of regretted that. What, clicking on the Snoop Boru? <laughs> I, I apologize. There, there is a lot of Snoop Boru stuff. By the time I knew it, the weekend had already passed and I was back to my usual weekday routine. Title. Oh. Go to school, do the work, hang out with Olivia, and then head back home. As much as I felt compelled to check in and on her after school, I didn't want to become intrusive. Besides, Olivia and I still talked over text and online anyway, and she said she was getting by just fine. Once Friday finally comes around again, though, no, I don't need that notification. I find myself lounging on the Payne's couch with Olivia. Initially, she had called me over to show off her new wheelchair. And who was I to say no? <laughs> God. Watching her do donuts in the living room till she was exhausted was certainly entertaining and a good demonstration of how nice the new chair was. It's cool to see a lot of people like the like the games. Unfortunately, the content ranges to cute to man. I did not want to see that. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. The Boru archives every single picture. So I don't know if they do blacklists over there, but I know you could probably turn on filters for uh, spicy content, as to say. Nice PNG. Thank you, Snessy. Just read the comic, damn. <laughs> Watching you do, uh, yeah. Then she just flies out. But now it's saying it now it sat abandoned in the middle of the room while Olivia sprawled out across the rest of the couch with her head laid out across my lap. My hands run across her back, elicting more of those sweet gator purrs of hers. Though the relaxing mood ends when the purrs stop and she speaks up. I've been thinking of our date, Inko. Oh, do tell. The annual Volcadera Modernist Expressionist Art Showcase. I've been only there a few times with Ikaden on school trips. I figured we could uh, check it out. Modernist Expressionist. Can't even envision what that style would be like. Huh, that certainly does sound uh, experimental. I know, I can't wait to see what the new ways people have to express their ideas. Cave paintings, too. I forget what cave paintings were. <clears throat> I know Snoop Baru had an old, older site, and then they moved, but I think that site's still up. Yeah, Olivia's the mature one here with the, with the growth points. I'd love to see if it could meld into my own work. 
Their thirst for artistic knowledge is certainly commendable. Yeah, sure, that sounds like fun. Perfect. Trust me, Nico. It will be a great experience for the both of us. I'm excited to see it. For the rest of the afternoon, Olivia shows off more of her video game collection. She even convinces me to play a few rounds of one of her favorite party games. Ooh, I wonder what it is. I still suck pretty bad at all this. But it was fun. I guess we'll never know. What is it, Mario Party? Like a normie? Saturday morning, the big day is here. Olivia started sending me restless texts after midnight. Honestly, I was pretty excited too, so I studied up with her for a while. She sent excited ideas and doodles of her plans for the day, and they became increasingly unhinged and wobbly until I had to convince her to go to bed. I got a weird question, but does she even explain how she is in the chair? Yeah, it was, uh, birth. Like, she was disabled at birth. Man, she's cute. Anyways, it's only about 10 in the morning, and I'm left sorting through a dozen or so, dozen or so reminder texts from Olivia. Like, she's, she's afraid I'll forget. I realize too late that I don't have much time to get ready, so I skip breakfast and get dressed and head out of the door. I guess E2 Inko is taking the role of E3 Olivia. Too late! Appe apparently, Olivia studied the metro schedule, so she'll be in the same cabin that comes to pick me up. It's a pretty nice day out, especially for a trip to the city. Despite the sun shining and blue skies, the air is brisk enough for a light jacket. Hopefully the showcase is heated as well. Before long, the metro comes sliding into the station and reaches a halt. Inko, over here. Olivia waves me over after we spot each other. Hey, Olivia. Inko, did you get my text? Yes, all 50 of them. You already know which stop we're getting off at? I have it memorized. I scouted the whole place online. It's not far It's not far from South Volcadera Central. That okay, was driving me nuts. I could never find out the answer. Yeah, I think it was in Ending 3 that was mentioned. I don't know. Heck yeah. Anything in particular you're looking forward to seeing? Uh, yeah. It said this place has a whole selection ded dedicated to expressionism. Uh-huh. You don't know what that means, do you? Nope. I just clicked pretty pictures with my magic expensive talent box. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll tell you the absolute basics. The art, gen the art genre for dummies, goofy, silly... Little Silly Billies. That's your worst one yet. Hush. Olivia smiles to herself, gathering her thoughts. Modernism tends to be more abstract, so you're going to see a lot of attempts at high concept stuff. Some of it's going to be com some of it is going to completely miss the mark. So don't think too hard about the meaning. If you don't get the gist of it in less than a minute, chances are it's just pretentious. All right, I'll keep that in mind. Okay, so expressionism is, as an art form is focused on evoking specific emotions or feelings in the viewer, and as predominantly post-war style, it can really, it really strives to capture the visual elements of dissociation, fear, and even death. I can see why this is ending too. The next thing I remember is being pulled by the hand off the train. All right, we're close. Oh, I'm so so excited. Thank you for going with me. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Come on, we got all day and I'm not wasting a second of it. Didn't an ending too, like, Fang dragged uh, Anon to, like, the, the music thing? What was it? Like a music uh, art, art thing? <laughs> art studio about music? Olivia drags me out of the metro down the custom-paved walkway. This part of town sure is different. It's just on the outskirts of the downtown area, with skyscrapers looming overhead mere blocks away. Very city-like, but also very lush with plants and landscaping. Just close enough to the businesses that the wealth is shared, but not enough so that it's inv invaded by regulated concrete offices. There's more suburbs nearby as well. 
the place we're going to may as well be a city center with how close it is to normal life. The underground thing. I found that comic, comic of reverse E1. Oof, indeed. Curious at minimum. I've seen the other endings, but not this one, and I'm kind of actually interested to see how this ending will play out. Me too! There's... There's... <laughs> There's a really awesome picture on Snoop Boro of Inko absolutely cratering Ben's face with his fist. I'll have to look for that one. There's more suburbs nearby as well. The place we're going to may as well be a... Yeah, we regret, regret that. <laughs> it's a standard of living I could certainly get used to. The McMansion we live in is fine, but this sort of thing really appeals to me. I'm imagining starting a family here. Inko! Oops, did you say something? We're almost here, look! Olivia jabs her finger at a building ahead of us on the walkway. Yeah, I can't wait for ending four either. Surrounded by a wide open field stands a vaguely modernist looking building. The structure and overall design make it seem like the building itself is a part of the exhibit. They spelt a part wrong! <laughs> While also not being too intrusive with the surrounding architecture. And the door doesn't budge. Huh. Olivia impatiently tries pulling the door open again, trying to jerk it open, but it clunk clunks uselessly. Well, Olivia, it says push for a reason. What the fuck? Olivia, the sign. It opens at 10. And my phone says it's only half past nine. Man, she got here early. Hmm. But... She's interrupted by a low rumbling noise and a dusting of red blooms on her cheeks. Olivia, did you just wake up and rush to the met metro without breakfast? Hmm. Yeah. Well, I can't blame you. I was excited and forgot to eat as well. Sorry. Don't be sorry. There's a local cafe just across the street. I gesture at it. Come on, let's get out of the cold. I'm not really getting that sense of dread like an ending one. You could really feel it in that route. Yeah, that was a shit show when that started. I knew I shouldn't have come in later. But we can always start from the beginning, Halloween. The streams will always be here. Mm, okay. Olivia was doing a good job at ignoring the chills, but she gave a big deep she gave a deep sigh of relief once we, once we entered the warm cafe. We order breakfast with a hot chocolate and take a seat near the window. Olivia takes her first warm sip and melts into her chair. For a while, we just rest quietly. She looks back to the gallery building. One other reason I wanted to go here. Mm-hmm. I need to give a speech. At the formal. Bridekin. Something that'd make him proud. Something that'd do him justice. Oh. I heard some of his earlier work ended up here. I wanted to see it. That's a very thoughtful idea, Olivia. Do you really think it's here? It better be. I like Naomi's new works on Snoop Boru. You mean the character, Naomi? Like, new works? I don't know what you mean by that. Yeah, ending to the one where Olivia grows up, but Inko stays toxic. You'll see why. <clears throat> we'll see. I mean, it seems like it's so far so good right now, but... We have yet to see. Let me get a drink. Oh! <clears throat> Olivia blows into her hot chocolate, and then takes a deep, careful sip. With the early morning lighting and the building in the back, it sets a delicately somber mood. A young lady taking a moment to herself from the elements outside. No, not letting this chance escape me. Hey, stay still a second. Hmm? Do that again. I want to save this. The red creeps back across her face. The coloring only enhances the potential shot before me. I lift my camera and carefully back away from Olivia, surveying the shot from all angles. Will you hurry up? 
Shh, just go back to the hot cocoa, Olivia. That's weird, Inko. You're being weird. Now she said that, Olivia does return to savoring the warm drink slowly. Oh, artworks. All right, I get it. Yeah, there, there is a lot of artworks up there. <laughs> Inko being rude, but not awful so far, yeah. It's as her lips finally touch the cup against the cup that the shot is perfect. My camera clicks in rapid succession, capturing the entire moment of her delicate sip. Through her soft sigh after, and the scarlet on her cheeks growing more and more in... Inko! Uh, sorry, Liv. Got the shot. Returning to the table, I turned to display her way so she could see the best of the 15 shots. <laughs> her face practically explodes with embarrassment as she draws her hoodie up to hide it. You look great, Olivia. Shut it. Do you really think so? Well, I don't know. I'm your boyfriend. Absolutely. You're more photogenic than you think, Olivia. Just look at Snooper, Olivia. Look, here's the website, Olivia. Look at it. <laughs> yeah, that'd, that'd end really fast. Just finished part four. Well, congratulations. <laughs> I wish Gator Girls were real. No, don't worry about Halloween. I, I've been spoiled at the title of that. Just don't spoil anymore. With an annoyed huff, she pulls her hoodie back. You suck at compliments, Inko. Even as she said that, her smile speaks even louder. Olivia looks back out again. Is that... Oh, yes. People are going in. Come on, let's go. I nod and put my things away. Olivia's already out the door while I throw out our trash. All right, for real this time. Art gallery, here we come. The door swings wide open this time, granting us access to the treasures within. I wish gators were real. I was just reading chat. <laughs> Upon entering the halls, it feels as though we're transported into a new world. One I've experienced before. The Nova Reach Rich World. I don't know how to say that. My footsteps and the quiet creaking of Olivia's wheelchair echo throughout the halls. There's already a few others, some older folk and some college students. We're definitely the youngest people here. Olivia waves to me to come close and speaks in a quiet voice. All right, they got the sculptures over that way. And those are cool, but what am I looking for is the regular painting halls, which should be... She looks around a bit and jams a finger down a corridor. That way. Got it. Florida Gator Girl attacks Mugger with a live alligator. Wait, Gator Girl attacks Mugger with a live alligator. I wish women were real. <laughs> we need to have a talk with Caveman and about making one of the one that wait. Making one about that blind 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 raptor girl. I don't know what that one is. I haven't, I haven't fallen too into the uh, AU side of the fandom, man. I will her down the direction she picked and into a large room. It's definitely what she was looking for. Paintings adorn the walls, evenly spaced apart and displayed with all the relevant information. If Idakin's work is anywhere, it'll be here. We search searching, and man... This building is beautiful. I ended up taking lots of shots. Olivia was a bit nervous and made it very clear if I used Flash even once, she would nibble my arm off. <laughs> I'm taking shots of Olivia looking around. The building itself and the occasional sculpture or painting I find neat. This really, this is really fun. We definitely got to make this a, we definitely got to make this a reoccurring thing. I watched your E1 stream and it absolutely broke me. So I bought the game and tried to get every good ending possible. So ending three and four. There's an epilogue if you get all endings. So that's what we're doing. Get all endings. Yeah, what Extremist said. Which one would you bring into existence after playing the game? Cat girls or gator girls? There's no wrong answer. Gator girls. For sure. At some points, Olivia stops and talks with one of the other visitors. She's actually hitting it off pretty good introducing herself. 
She even gets to make a couple of connections to local artists. A few even give her a business card. Didn't know artists use those. And the art itself? Some of the paintings are beautiful landscapes. Some more abstract. Might be that modernism thing Olivia br bum rushed me with on the way here. Good choice, Gator Girl. Yeah. Some, though, are just trash. Overly pretentious, just warped ugly figures or meaningless arrangements of colors. Ugh, I can do- I can do better than this. Olivia stares back at- at some of them, don't know what for. As far as I know, a lot of this stuff is just used in money laundering. We search on and on, but none of the paintings we see are by Eidekin. Even after an hour, even after splitting up to check some of the smaller rooms, we find nothing. Eventually, we take a break in the main hall. Even the benches here are sleek. So far, all the modern art stuff has been... To be honest, they feel like absurd jokes. Between very questionably shaped statues, to objects just glued onto hanging canvases. It's just all bizarre to me. The girl is mute, not mine. That sounds familiar, but I don't know. So, no luck? Nope. We watch as a small group of bickering before a, before a stone relief, and we have a 3D golden toilet. It's the potty awards, man. Of a toilet. Very nice toilet, but still. My foot jostles Olivia's empty chair before us, which we've used as a makeshift table for all of, a, for all of our stuff. Sayinko. There's a glint of mischief in her silver eyes. She motions me closer and whispers her idea into my ear. I feel my own mischievous grin start to form. With a loud nod of agreement, my hands reach for the handlebars of Olivia's chair. Ten minutes later... Hmm, must be a statement against modern industrial pharmaceutical companies. No, no, no. Clearly a display of isolation of the average artist today. Our makeshift hand puppets drop as we laugh. Watching as a pair of suit-wearing 30-somethings debate over my camera, sat in Olivia's wheelchair on the other end of the room. Skibbity golden to Everyone's just skibbity now. <laughs> my god. Oh my god. I could I could do something funny. You know, if you humor me, just humor me. No, go back. No, go back. Humor me here. Oh, I can't. How do I? I think it's alt. Yeah. There we go. Skibbity toilet. There you go, guys. I'm skibbity now. <laughs> skibbity. All right. I'm not fucking around. I'm gonna go back in my corner. <laughs> Alright. Uh... Sayinko. Alright, we, we did this. Ten minutes later. Yeah, we read that. The toilet isn't skibbity enough. Getting in to see the polished toilet spin meme. <laughs> what? It's a meme? We did it, bros. Is that the skin you get after 100% skibbity toilet? <laughs> Alright, um... We sat, we're sat together, leaning heavily on each other as we eagerly keep an eye on our own little artistic display. Oh, they put, they put the wheelchair on display! Oh my god. What did I just join to? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Nario. I had to do a shit post. A literal shit post! I still don't understand Skibbity Toilet. I don't either. That's a literal shit post. <laughs> Can someone remind if Olivia is just in a coma in ending one? I don't know. I think it's an ambiguous ending where it's like you can like interpret it, interpret either she lives or dies or whatever. I don't know. On one end of the hall, us. Just a normal, unassuming couple taking a breather and enjoying each other's company. On the other end of the front of the blank, se blank section of wall, a lone wheelchair sits with a camera carefully planted, placed in its seat. It was Olivia's idea. 
She's a genius. Every few minutes, a patron will come waltzing down the hall and take a pause to stare at it. Chat, chat in typical fashion, I see. <laughs> the best chat. It's like the most profound thing they've ever seen. When some journalist looking guy takes a knee to get a picture, we all it took all it took all we had not to burst into laughter. It worked on everyone that passed by. Without fail. Every time. Eventually the flow of people slows down and I feel Olivia squeeze my hand. You okay? Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. Sorry we haven't found what you were looking for yet. The pink shadow there looks like Susie. Okay, I have to go back. You you said Susie. Yeah, it does look like Susie. Oh my god. Susie Deltarune? Oh my god. Yeah. Big dead. Interesting sequel, Olivia. Well, it's good. a bunch of people are going to be writing fanfics and mods and all that. That's fine. I'm still seeing a lot of neat stuff. It does kind of suck. It's probably not here, though. Yeah, I hear you. God fucking damn it, Chris. Where are we? <laughs> oh, I love Susie. You got some new buddies, I saw. Yeah, we're not the only artists here right now. One of them was here to check her work, since it was recently displayed. Wow. There's a lot of great stuff here. Stop the coping. What? Nice, I'm glad. I really like the... Oh god, what is this? Oh, what have we here? What have we here? What What is your face? It's an older woman who called out to us, approaching with a syrup, syrup team look in her eyes. Is like she a human snake or something? Some people IRL are really that shitty. No cope, we die like men. Sequel art? Oh god. Everyone's seen that. I haven't seen it yet. I'll have to look at that. Who's that Pokemon? From her, her elegant sequin dress to her bright golden heels that clicked with every step, I can only guess that she's some important figure here. Hey, doggo. Wait, uh, ma'am, would you be... Olivia's excited words are cut off by the well-dressed woman, now standing right before us and st sporting a simple smile. Yes, Al Elena Sackborough. I own and operate this gallery. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Miss Sackborough, or Scarborough. I can't read. I need eyes. I'm blind. The rehearsed words came out so come out so easily. All those garden parties I've attended have having helped me learn the proper etiquette. No laws against the Pokemon Batman. Someone posted that video to me. Yeah, the mod scenes for this game should be big snoot game mods kind of stopped. Yeah. I'm Inko Nito, and she's Olivia Halford. You two are awfully young. Are you two on a date? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Olivia blushes a bit at how confidently I said it. Oh, I hear of all places. What piqued your curiosity, if I may ask? I'm working towards becoming a photographer myself, and today was all Olivia's idea. I can see that. I can see that DSLR you have certainly brings back some memories. Olivia straightens her posture with confidence. I'm an aspiring artist, Miss Scarborough. Please, Elena is just fine. Right then, Elena, I wanted to learn more about the current art world. Reading is hard. It is hard when you're me. I'm horrible. And there's a particular art piece I'd like to see here. Elena nods. Um, is there anything here by a Trent Eikaden? Eikaden. That's definitely a unique name. I keep, I keep flipping flopping with Eidekin's name. Inko got that light skin stare. <laughs> one I haven't heard in a long time, and one I couldn't possibly forget. You mean, 
Yes, I'm certain we have some work from him still around. Would you like me to lead the way? Yes, please. I believe it's a bit far on the other end of the facility. I can see how it would be easy to miss. It's a bit hidden away in one of the smaller rooms. Come. She stops mid-term. Huh? I don't remember that being installed. Oh, it's the art. It's the fake art piece. Interesting. <laughs> hey. Oh, well, aren't you too rambunctious? Well played. Sorry, Elena. Don't be sorry. Being a little being little rascals is what a lot of art is all about. I want a lot of mods that take place when Inko trips on drugs while well sick. That'll probably happen. Come, it's this way. I think I saw someone putting a mod that makes like a bootleg guitar hero in the game. <laughs> I start pushing Olivia, following the gallery owner. Olivia motions me to come close and whispers in my ear. I like her. She's fun, yeah? Elena rounds the corner and clears her throat again. So, Olivia. Yes, ma'am? You say you're looking to be a better artist. Do you mean professionally? Yes, actually. That's wonderful. I'd love to see your work sometime. If it's good enough, we can even feature it in a year someday. Really? Oh yes, this place is great. Is a great way for a local artist to be supported. <clears throat> Inko wants in the promised land. He said, "Let my Inkos go." <laughs> what? We still, in that's okay. We still enjoy the entertainment you give us. Yes, even even in my faltering, I I am still worth some entertainment. Let me grab a drink. He can have a Delta Rune adventure with a purple Olivia. Yes. Has has she even cosplayed as Susie? Is there like a cosplay picture of Olivia as Susie? Because I I'd be into that. The building in my business is a nonprofit. Yes, but artists can choose to display their work for commercial purposes. A substantial amount here is for sale, and all the money goes to the artists. A substantial amount. Maybe Olivia would appreciate some memorabilia for today. Wow, that's amazing. I'm definitely interested. Elena looks smashable enough. Hey, hey. I, I kind of have to agree. Zen's thirsty already. Female Pokemon Wario. Where was that comment from? Great. I didn't even know there was a place like this. Do you know of the other advantages that could work for you, then? Advantages? No, I don't. The gallery owner takes out a small tablet, tapping lightly on the display until she presents a digital flyer to Olivia. Yes, there's several organizations that support dis- Uh-oh. <laughs> this can go nowhere good. This isn't going to go anywhere good, guys. That support disabled artists from simple connections up to running their own exclusive events. If you want, I could pass your name around to some of the busybodies that tend to show up and to poach up some coming up, up and coming artists. I can't help but cock an eyebrow to her tone. Oh, she used the word poach. Yeah, there she goes. Go to horny jail. Hey, let just leave them alone. Leave them alone. Olivia must have thought similarly as she shook her head. No, no thank you. I need to be an artist that's good enough on my own. And I need to be an artist that I Idakin would be proud of. Without any crutches. I'd be a terrible student if I did. Oh, you knew Idakin? I should have figured. How's he doing these days? Oh. Oh, uh. Hmm. Eidekin's passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. My condolences. Was he important to you? Was he important to you? Olivia was his student. I understand. I only knew him decades ago. His work was superb. But I didn't know he had an apprentice. Oh, are you his apprentice? I... Oh, who's this? 
Miss Elena, a moment, please. Abraham, I'm clearly in the middle of... What is this? The shipment is here. They need you to sign it right away. Oh, of all the timing. I'm so sorry, you two. This will only take a moment. That's my secret, Captain. I'm always thirsty. Yes, Elena. She points down into a room next to us. It's right in there. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be right back. I promise. You good? Yeah, let's go see it. We enter the small display room. The lights are kept intentionally dimmer in this room to create a calmer atmosphere. All along the walls are more paintings, and there's a lone bench in the center of the room. Which one is Eidekin's? Maybe there's more than one. They're probably all his. This is one creepy room, holy crap. What are these, like, soy jacks? Is this a chud? And this is a soy jack? Like, this looks like a soy jack. They're, they're all soy jacks, dude. <laughs> My god. He's just soy jacking out. Zen, we must stop you. You're unquenchable. Well, it doesn't help that I streamed Atlas that one time. God, everyone was fucking thirsty in that one. All right, we've taken in enough soy jacks. Or soy dinos, I should say. Here it is. I caught up to her. The name on the painting is unmistakable. Trent Eidekin, age 19. Alma, Ma Alma Mater St. in High School. What on earth? And the painting itself. An elaborate depiction of a dino twisted and warped st stylistically. I can't tell if it's mocking or what. When he has fallen, billions must snoop. <laughs> it's part of a set. And there's half a dozen on this type of the walls here. Huh. It's the real thing. Wow. They're amazing. But what is it? Didn't I tell you on the way over? Eidekin's early work was expressionist portraits. He made these when he was just a year older than I am now. Some of these are historical figures. Some are just people he knew personally. A few are just every man. They're made in a very special way. Eidekin was a shit poster for sure. That was like the early ages of the internet then, if he was 19. What what year would have that been? Look at all those dino soy jacks, yes. <laughs> I don't want to do math right now, but I'm assuming that's probably pretty, pretty early in the internet's days. I mean, if he was 19, I was... Yeah, that is probably pretty early. That's probably when memes just started, like, getting popular within, like, the 4chan crowd. I I'm assuming. They're made in a very special way. Portraits show the person distorted in unique ways, based on that person's life and Eidekin's opinion of them. I, I see he doesn't really have good opinions on some people here. <laughs> uh huh. Are they in praise of people de depicted or critical? Around 2005. Yeah, I'd be around the time. Hey, Ramon. People would get into arguments over that. If they were satirical caricatures with a little too much effort put into them. Or if they were in praise, showing people's lives as a truly a part of them, through the brilliant brushwork. But he never said. I wonder why. If you ask me, I think it's both. It's not about how good or bad he wanted to depict people. It's a brutal sincerity, an urge to embrace your flaws and strengths together. Early internet, I feel old. I know, right? The the internet of today kind of sucks. <laughs> Just putting that out there. <clears throat> People either disregarded one or the other in their interpretations. It's like he created the proverbial half glass of water. Amazing, right? I think. Hmm. Honestly, to me, it just sort of looks un ironically ugly distortions of characters painted in a very skilled way. I like your interpretation. 
didn't see that face before. And what's up? Oh. Wait, what face? Agreed. Yes, agreed about the poo poo new internet. It's really deep. Thanks. In all honestly, I don't understand the purpose of what these paintings are. Swirling some colors around a person's head doesn't do much to express their personality. I wonder what people would say about Olivia's paintings if they were hung up here. Will she even get that chance? It's a lot harder to get in the mainstream nowadays than it was when Idakin was her age. Speaking of... Hey, Olivia? Mm-hmm. Why did you reject Elena's offer earlier? Well, you know! You know, Inko! <clears throat> I said already, I wanted to be a good enough artist without all that stuff. If I'm Idakin's legacy, I need to live up to his accomplishments. Idakin didn't need any benefits to get where he was, so I shouldn't either. Are you sure? Olivia Cox and Eyebrow. It's just to kickstart your career. It's a safety net. It's a guarantee that later you can live up to a skill. It's a better chance to even suppress his acclaim. But it's not the one I want. Idakin passed on what he knew to me. It's not right to take the easy way up. Besides, I don't want to be shoehorned into some niche category simply because I was born into it. Yeah, Inko's not listening. Half The half glass of water is so easy. You filled it to the half. It's half filled. You emptied it to the half. It's half empty. It's just water. And what about your own legacy eventually? What happens if you just can't find another big break like that? You won't be able to pass on what he taught you to someone else. Isn't that scary? It's terrifying. Her words shook as she said that. You make a good point, but... Olivia's eyes look at Idakin's name on the wall, which seems to fill her with courage. For now, I'll just think about it, alright? Inko needs to be punched. Pretty soon, I'd, I'd think. And now Olivia's stuck in her different rut, trying to fill Idakin's legacy. Porcupine, do you know what Idakin's favorite song is? Is this a joke? Are you gonna try and tell me a joke? <laughs> Alright, shoot. What is it? The loud clicking of heels causes Olivia and I to look towards the entrance of the room. Did you two find it? Oh, excellent. Yes, Elena, we found it. Ah, I just love this set. Who doesn't love a good bit of critical analysis? Did you get what you wanted? Yes. Yes, I think I did. Bad to the bone. Oh, I don't know if I get that joke. Bad to the bone, I can... I, I must be retarded if I don't... If I don't understand it. You suck. Bad to the bone. I'm literally drawing... <laughs> I, I'm quite possibly retarded. <laughs> oh the bone cancer oh i <laughs> now it hits me i i forgot what he was <laughs> i need to pay attention more i'm gonna get punched in the face Inko's favorite song is hit me baby one more time i'm gonna get punched <laughs> i needed to see the real thing thanks elena of course i'm glad to help is there anything else you needed uh, actually, Elena. Hmm? Is this set for sale? The set here? Now that I think about it, it was. Although the price was pretty high, I think you only wanted the money if it was really substantial. If you two know him, I could lower it for you to be something more reasonable. I think you would have wanted that. The Bone Zone. The Bone Zone! I think it'd be nice to at get at least one for Olivia. Inko! Huh? She tugs at my sleeve. No, please don't. They're right here where they need to be. Who that I was taking a shot. What? But you just said everyone else doesn't get it. Even so, I wanted to stay here where everyone can see it. I can never keep it to myself. It's 
like it's some kind of personal keepsake. Please, Inko, don't. Okay, okay. Sorry, I just thought you'd appreciate it. Thanks for thinking of me, but no. Okay. I take Olivia's hand, her tense claws slowly receding. Um, how much longer will these stay up? Oh, indefinitely, probably. People do really like the work, they just can't afford it. I suppose if someone does buy it now, his next of kin would get, it, would get the money. I should contact them to make sure that, that sort of thing is arranged just in case. Sorry for getting emotional right there. No, not at all. I think that mindset is very noble of you. No, oh, I have other things to attend to, if you'll excuse me. Thank you for your visit. Please let me know if there's anything else you need. As the owner starts walking away, Olivia squeezes my hand. With her silver eyes, I could see Olivia's thoughts at war with one another. Um, Elena? She stops and turns again. Yes. You asked before if I was Idakin's apprentice. Oh yes, and then I got cut off. My bad. Are you? I am. Elena gives a warm smile. And I expect big things from you. Well, Olivia said I shouldn't buy Idakin's pieces. I could... I could still give something to Olivia. Oh god. Take the pictures. Watch, the flash is going to be on. Taking up my camera, I adjust the ISO and the f-stop so I won't need to use my flash within the room. Inko? So just take a moment. She's not going to like that. It's a simple matter. Paintings means the sole subject of the photos I take. I don't even have to manually focus on them. My camera clicks near silently as I pace the room, capturing the perfect duplicate of each of each of our teacher's work. Okay, now I'm seeing the pro what the problem is with Inko is. Yeah, he's definitely going to be... This is definitely going to piss Olivia off. When we finish here, I'll be sure to print and frame them for Olivia. But for now, I should focus on our date. I stroll back to Olivia and hand her my camera so that she can expect, inspect the shots herself and she's probably going to delete every one of them. Well, she smiles as she looks over them and I take hold of her chair. Say, want to go snag snag some of the little sandwiches they had at the front? Sure, you, dr you drive. <laughs> With a nod, we exit the room and start heading back to the main hall of the gallery. It goes slip hard. I see it coming. That was not silent, I know, right? Now O's accepts with being his apprentice rather than growing into her own, her best self like he wanted her to. <clears throat> Inko. Hmm? Olivia's head tilts back so she can look me in the eye. Sorry if this wasn't the ideal date. What? No, I'm enjoying it, Olivia. You sure? Absolutely. In fact, I want to see more galleries like this. Just the two of us, critiquing fascinating new pieces, giving our honest thoughts. Snapping photos of the best ones. I could definitely picture us going on more dates like this. However, there's also another date I had in mind. Ink and file, baby, let's go! <laughs> Olivia. Yeah? About the winter formal. Yeah? Monka, as she's going to become a... What is that, a freak? I can't read. I'll oh, come a freak and Inko a pain in the air. Just the two of us. Do you still want to go with me? I nearly stumble over how... Nearly stumble over her now wagging tail. Of course! We are going together. Yes, I know, but I mean... Yes, Inko, I want to go with you. Her eager words send a wave of ease and easiness throughout my mind and body, relieving me of the tension that I hadn't even noticed. So, it's a date? It's a date. A smile tugs at her face as she reaches out for my hand. I take hers and we continue our walk towards the exit. So I guess we're going to the... It's going to be the winter formal now, coming out. So we're getting close to endgame here. And so far, things seem to be okay. <clears throat> but we'll see. 
On the metro ride back, Olivia leans against my shoulder. Her eyes follow landmarks out the window on the other side of the car as we pass them by. So how does this lead to ending two? This doesn't seem that toxic like before. That'd be funny if it was just ending four for no reason, but I doubt it. Despite the loud humming of the tracks, I feel Olivia's hum I feel Olimi Olivia humming to herself. So, what are you thinking? Hmm. I'm trying to put my thoughts together. What am I going to say for Idikin's memorial? I definitely have all the pieces I need. I just have a hard time stringing them together. She probably screws up at the formal last moment. Oh dear, Porky, you, you will regret some of those words after. I know. How so? I don't know. It just needs to be something that will really do him justice. I need a solid direction. We pass under a few bi bridges while the thoughts hit. What do you think? A direction? She nods. In that case, I think I have a few ideas. What I saw today. I saw a lot of you. How Idakin affected you. How his teaching shaped who you are now. This background would be great for a desktop wallpaper. Well, glad you brought that up, because if you download, uh, what is that, uh, there's a desktop wallpaper. I don't know if I have that installed. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me cook. No, uh, I need all of them. All the games. Do I not have that? There's like desktop wallpaper thing you can get on Steam, and they do have the Olivia train picture on there. I've used it for a while, and you can kind of hear it in the background of my streams sometimes. There's definitely a wallpaper. The gator have very strong... Gators have very strong tails, yes. I think E2 is like a counter to E3 being realistic, but bad with ending 1 and 4 being much more extreme. Well, let me check my notifications now that I'm on Steam. Alright. Um, where is... Give me the Gator game. There we go. That story is amazing. E4 is cope for E3? What? And I know everyone else will love it as much as I do. There's your angle. Olivia doesn't respond, but I feel her humming to herself again. Oh, wasn't it Wallpaper Engine? I think that's the program name. I definitely downloaded the Olivia one. <clears throat> Man, that sat for my desktop for the longest time, and then I had to like bring my PC in to be fixed, so I had to take that down. <laughs> I should probably download that. I like <laughs> I haven't even changed my wallpaper since getting my PC back, and they didn't even really fix it. Olivia doesn't respond, but I feel her humming to herself again. Maybe that's a good point. What if people don't get it, though? I'm unsure still. No, the more I think about it, the more I think that needs to be the big thing. After all, who is closer to him than you? Even if you say you're his apprentice, doesn't that mean you're the end result of his life's work? TLDR game says E3 is where Inko gets points and Liv doesn't. E2 is where... Yeah, I know about that. Took it down to hide your power. Yes, I have a lot of incriminating stuff on my PC. I had to gut out. <laughs> I had to. I had to hide my power levels. And for what? I get my PC back. Not changed. The most they did was replace the SSD. And for what? My computer still acts up. So I'm stuck with a lemon. Cry for the weeper. Woe my downfall. <laughs> what? Let his, live, w let his work live on through you. I'm sure he'd love that. She smiles to herself. Yeah, I think you're right. Thanks, this really helped. I'm glad to be of service. Alright, drink time. Get a USB drive. Oh, trust me, I do have all of my incriminating evidence on a, on a portable drive. But the thing is, I have to, like, scrub links and bookmarks and stuff. I have to export my bookmarks and all that. It's not, it's not a fun process. Get rid of all my passwords. Sign myself out of things. Pretty much almost make it look like a fresh install. 
But then again, it wasn't, it was all for nothing. My cell phone wallpaper is the one just a boy who loves pterodactyls and gators. It's simply perfect. Cautiously waiting for it to suddenly get as depressive as Snoot ending too. Yeah, it seems so far so good. Let's hope the Discord chat messages don't get leaked. Yeah, yeah, sure. Hold on, I gotta clean my... Oh, Freaking acid reflux. I use a portable hard drive for my prawns, yes. If you don't, you should. That history must be a horror story. What history? Yo, you mean my browsing history? <laughs> oh, if I brought up Snoop Horror, what else do you think I freaking browse? <laughs> the rest of the ride goes quieter, just us enjoying each other's company. I try to escort Olivia back home when the time comes, but she insists she can get there on her own. She offers me one last hug before we part ways for the day. As the metro races towards my stop, I think about the future. Olivia and I are going to the winter formal together. I'll need a good outfit and a bouquet if I want to impress her. More like the gilded chats. Hey, the gilded, the gilded stuff's actually 100% clean. There's only one server I run there, and that's my, and that's uh, Blaze's server, and we keep that shit clean. Imagine Porcupine Discord not safe for work session. <laughs> hey, my my servers on Discord are my own business. What do you call an alligator who loves watering his plants? An irrigator. I, I don't understand that one. All right, shouldn't she be her own artist instead of following someone else's legacy? Well, if it keeps her, if it keeps her happy. My browsing history would give any advertiser brain scars. I invite them to see it. <laughs> yeah, we don't show our browser histories. Just don't pull out the prawns folder by accident like a certain streamer. No, I don't. That's what happens when you stream. There's, there's a lot of things. If you want to be a streamer, you don't stream directly to desktop. That is, that is a cardinal sin. And another thing with streaming your, streaming like YouTube or your browser screen, you want to get rid of autofill. Like my God, that shit is so incriminating. I can't, tr I don't trust people who like have their autofill out for everyone to see. You want to get rid of that. Uh, who cares about the convenience of finishing your, your websites or whatever? That's what bookmarks are for. Get rid of autofill. <laughs> All right, then keep your secrets. I shall. You answered your own question. Who's more simp, Ben or Inko? Well, we'll find out. <laughs> also, you don't have File Explorer automatically open to the screen you use to stream. Yeah, I don't show my files. Short stack. The only way I see this ending badly is if Olivia falls, fails to live up to her interpretation of Eidekin's legacy and spirals, and then Inko says something dumb and they break up, I guess. Ben is that kind of step on me, mommy guy. <laughs> hey, hey, don't make fun of that. That's valid. Ben's got his reasons. Inko is just flat out immature. Waka no spoilers. Well, that's not spoilers. That's his speculation. The wisdom of pork. Autofill is gay. Yes, don't use autofill. If you're a streamer. Hell, like even in regular stuff. Because you never know who's going to be looking over your shoulder. And then they'll see, oh, well, what has this guy been browsing? Turn off autofill. It is the devil. Anyways, back to the game. I'm sorry, guys. Olivia and I are going to the winter formal together, and I'll need a good outfit and bouquet if I want to impress her. I wonder what kind of dress she'll want to wear. It might be hard since she's disabled, but I'm, but maybe I can look into it and give her some suggestions. It's December. Winter in Vol Volcadera Bluffs is officially here. Let's be honest, most guys would go for Mia. I, I, I don't know. Mia kind of scares me in a bad way, not in a good way. I feel like if I was with Mia, I'd die. Like, I wouldn't be beat, I'd be dead. My mom went through my search history and saw my comics. I, I'm sorry for your loss. Me, because I'm ducking stupid. Mia is smash but both. I don't know if I would simp Mia. I feel like Mia would kill me, and I, I would very much like to live. 
And as if to celebrate the occasion, tonight is St. Hammond's Winter Formal. Here we go, guys. Hard to believe it's already here. It really crept up on me. Whenever I'd remember the event coming up, I'd just force it out of my mind. We've already read this, and I'm going to try and skip. Thank goodness for the skip feature. Let's go. She's worked on her dress the whole week for it to look perfect. Worked on it? You mean she made it herself? More like she helped me in making it for her. She even added her own personal flair to it. Me as a baddie, bro. I can fix... I can ironically fix her. Chat, did I guess ending too? I hope you didn't. I hope no one gets to open up my sketchbook. God, I'm saying. I don't want anyone looking up my shit. <laughs> I've drawn some things... It's the I can fix her mentality. I can't fix her. I'm going to be needing to be fixed after anyone but Kiara. Now, we didn't get to see much of Kiara or Lunara. I'm, I'm pretty sure there will probably be mods of them. St. Hammond as in John Hammond, the creator and CEO of INGN, which, is, which created Jurassic Park. Now, that's probably, that's probably a reference. A homemade dress. Oh, wow. And if Olivia helps, she's going to look amazing. It's anatomy, guys. It's necessary. <laughs> Don't stick your things in crazy, people. That that's That is true. Yeah, we're doing ending four after this. Winko, I see that look. My face ignites in embarrassment as the rest of the room laughs at me. Uh, it's just some ribbing, Inko. Don't you want f don't want you feeling left out after all? Gee, thanks, Randy. There's more laughter, but I can't stay angry at the pains. Instead, I take the last spot on the couch and lean back, mindful not to crease my suit too much. For the next couple of minutes, we simply wait and relax. Well, Damien and I relax. A blush slowly spreading across his lit, uh, spreading from Liz's cheeks and down her neck. Kind of reminds me of a thermometer. Damien shuffles closer to her, and her red face coming down closer to him. Sophia's so adorable. Yeah, Sophia's pretty cute. Uh, I'm sure that Boru's got a lot of art pieces of her. Mia can't be fixed. Gonna be the no. The white dress was ending one, I believe. We already got the white dress, which turned into the red dress, which turned into Olivia going to the hospital. Liz is adorable, too. Yeah, I, I still got to get used to the long neck, but yeah, I could agree. Just two people not growing up. Whatever he ma said makes the Lizmometer hit a thousand degrees with an alerted yelp. His parents are just grinning as she squirms under their gaze. Don't feel too bad for her, though. This is what she wants, I think. Still, what the heck did Damien tell her? No, scratch that. Is Damien even doing this on purpose? Why, we're all s Why are we all staring at the red garden hose? <laughs> I turn to Olivia's voice and... That's the white dress again. Okay, so I guess white dress is both ending one and two? Still, it's a nice dress. It's simple. But it's nice. Liz will... <laughs> okay, okay. We're, we're not going to imagine that. <laughs> I hear that joke was dirty. I suppose the hospital gown is... <laughs> oh, I'm going to hell. Thank you, Firefly. Some people just like a type of woman that can destroy them, I guess. I mean, yes, I can agree, but I don't want to fucking die in the process. Hi, I'm Randy, and Randy Payne, and I see per pain and pain accessories. I hope it won't end like last time. If it does, I'm leaving. No, there should be no hospital this time. Alright. Uh oh. Wow. I... Oh, I knew you'd look amazing, Olivia, but to go so far. A hand slaps my back hard enough to make me stand and yelp. Randy grins unapologetically and then motions me towards Olivia. Olivia, you look... So many words fill my mind to describe her. I can feel my mouth flapping uselessly as I try to pick one. I look... 
gulping in a breath of air, I finally pick beautiful. <laughs> the single word is enough to make Olivia's blush reach as far as her shoulders. I always love a woman that can beat me. I mean, low-key same, dude. <laughs> Like serious, I was advised to stop. You probably should. We're, we don't need to be more thirsty. I already have the water. I'm not sharing my water with you, thirsty people. It's my water. It's my water. It's mine. Single word. Yep, yeah, we read that. And yet she smiles, even twirling her chair side to side so I can take in all the angles of her dress. It is a nice dress. She didn't even make her hair. Her hair is fine enough. I can appreciate a little messiness in her hair. Sophia said you helped make it? More like she helped me. It is quite vibrant in color, something that I've come to realize when it comes to any work Olivia does. So what are we waiting for? Traffic's gonna suck like hell. Shouldn't we be getting into Liz's car now? About that. Oh, he's got the fucking limo again, guys. It's fang all over. Grabs through your screen. No, get away from my water. I already spit in it. I drink my sweat. That's that's kind of gross. What the? Honk. That'll be our cue. Thank you again for having me, Sophia. Randy. If my hands weren't preoccupied with rolling the, my confused date to the door, I would have waved back to Damien's parents. Damien holds the door open, so Olivia is able, so Olivia is able to clearly see our ride from the night. Whoa! Awesome. The pristine white limousine parked out in front, I in the front idols waiting for us. Yeah, that's good. She came out on her own. I mean, ending three, she doesn't. Drinking your sweat is technically drinking waste. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, that's probably gross tasting, too. Our chauffeur exits his seat and rounds the car to hold the door open for us. Mindful of him, I wheel Olivia as close, as close to the entryway. The driver moves to assist Olivia, but I hold my hand out to stop him. I'll help her. Could you handle her chair? Of course, sir. He holds the chair in place. If I may. Yeah, yeah, I get it. With all the care necessary, one arm snakes behind Olivia's knees and the other around the back. Like, this, seeing this after ending one just fills me with dread. I, is this where the dread comes in? Because I'm feeling the dread. Monka asks what could go wrong now. I know, right? The limo. The limo. Nothing good came from the limo. I lift Olivia from her chair in a princess carry, feeling my legs shaking as I take the final two steps. She's a very heavy girl. Olivia tucks her head against my neck, her hot breath making my skin tingle pleasantly. Finally, I set her down into the soft leather seat within, right next to the tiny Phrygian bar. Hope the monarch is the limo driver. Yeah, I'm worried too, whoops. There she is. I think she's a little taller than before, because, like, in ending one, she was, like, at the half height. Like, she she was, like, down here. I'm pretty sure. Looking through her... Looking <laughs> looking through her back window? Jeez, where am I looking? <laughs> looking through the back window, the driver has finished securing her wheelchair in the trunk. He gives me a nod and returns back to the passenger drawer where Damien and Liz... Damien is guiding Liz in. Oh, we get them in the back, too. That's great. I love this. What could possibly go wrong? The man is living already a midlife crisis from seeing limos. Work needs a couple more gallons of water. Hey, I've, read, I've rode in limos. I've rode in at least two of them. And they're very nice. And you can actually... The, the, and we're... You can actually drink while riding, which you can't do in, like, other vehicles. So I can appreciate that. Maybe she's sitting straighter. True. 
Yeah, seeing how spacious this limo is with how Liz has her neck all the way up here. Like, this has got to be like one of those van type limos or whatever. Big ass limo. Right, you just jinxed us. Wow, it even looks nicer than on the website. Really like Liz's dress. Let me look at it. Yeah. Liz looks nice. 30 feet tall. It's neutral because most people in real life get this ending. We didn't, guys. We got ending three. Hey, Inky, the bar's free game, right? I throw Damien a thumbs up. All paid for. Inko, we didn't agree. It's fine, Liz. I covered the extra cost. Awesome. Damien's already pulled two glass bottles of cola from the tiny fridge. Bro. That doesn't apply to me because I don't got any friends. Yeah, it's the Hummer limo, that's what I'm thinking. Psst. As with his tooth, he cracks open the second one with as minimal effort for you. He waves his bottle over to me in an offering. I decline. Leaning over, I manage to snag two bottles of the fan with and a fancy bottle opener. All the bottles open, I hold mine up for all to see. A toast before we get there. To what, though? Oh, crap, I didn't think I had it for this. To a good night. And to Idikin's memory. Yeah. Our bottles clink loudly against each other, and we proceed to drink our frothy, caffeinated beverages. Yeah, it is a huge limo. By the time we reach the convention center, the fridge has been thoroughly emptied of his contents. I'm honestly impressed that Damien could drink so much. Is he going to be drunk? That'd be funny. Just hyped on fucking caffeine. Ha. Somehow he hasn't burped a single time, and I don't even want to try and wrap my head around how anymore. I got ending three and snoot, now four and one. And he caved man in. I learned some of your lessons. I haven't. <laughs> Olivia's hand wraps around mine while we wait for the limousine to come to a stop. Green out of the tinted window, I see a, I see plenty of activity just outside the venue's doors. It looks like the, a line has already formed. All of the dinosaurs are dressed in colorful formal wear as they socialize with each other and drink from suspiciously opaque bottles. They're not even in the door and the party's already started. Olivia suddenly wraps her hand around mine, drawing my attention away from the site. Why didn't he wait? There's drinks at the party. He might fuck. What? God. You people. Everybody else is going to be so jealous of us. That was the intention. I smile and squeeze Olivia's hand. She squeezes back. Man, how, how is this going to go bad? Don't hurt me, caveman on. The shining moment finally comes to as our limousine pulls into the open carport in front of the venue, quiet, quieting the crowd down just to murmurs. We wait in deafening silence for another minute or so before the passenger door opens wide. Mia strikes back. Yeah, this music is deceivingly happy. Taking the initiative, I step out into the open as the driver sets up the wheelchair with a flourish. Our ride makes a great set piece and naturally, dra dra naturally draws the attention of everyone nearby as I ease Olivia into her chair gently. Whoa, is that? That's Inko and Olivia! A human di- <laughs> A human dino couple? Cringe! Holy shit, it's Sis Sisyphus? Oh, wait, isn't Sisyphus the thing that, like, roll the person who rolls up that frickin' boulder as it comes back down? I forget. Damien's gonna be pissing like a racehorse the whole formal. Kinda like me when I'm drinking all this water. My god, I'm surprised I didn't have to take a bathroom break yet. But now as, the, uh, now as I say that, my bladder's gonna go work in overtime. <clears throat> I bask in my peers' adm admiration as Damien and Liz follow after us. There's a figurative red carpet stretching out from our limousine to the entrance of the venue. 
is apparently a reference. Sisyphus is crazy. Is that yes to the Sisyphus reference? Okay, okay. Oh god, it was Star Wars all along. I knew it. Have a good evening, sirs and ladies. Before the driver turns away, I shake his hand, palming him the necessary tip. The sound of the car door shuts behind me, and I take this as our cue to push Olivia forward and get us a spot in line. As we make our way inside, our fellow classmates continue to vocalize their astonishment. General Kenobi. Cringe, he said. Homofa fans are crying already. Poor Homofa fans. Rolling the armored porcupine up the hill for eternity. Yes, roll me up the hill. Inko pushes Olivia. <clears throat> Damn! Come to the party in style, Nito! Olivia, looking good, girl. You make that dress yourself? Is it just me, or do Inko and Olivia look kind of cute together? <laughs> as much as I hate to admit it. Wait, what the hell am I saying? I'm loving this. After months of feeling regarded as the school's outcast, the spotlight's finally shining on me, and I'm re reveling in it. And it feels good knowing that Olivia was getting the attention she rightfully deserves. Me and my... Me and my card, eh? Ca card? Me and my card? Slowly move past the crowd with heads held high. We approach the sign-in table where more people in line look our way. Hmm. <laughs> Figures. Think we could cut him? Wait, why would we uh, be allowed to? Let's go, Winko. The nod, I push Olivia around the line and head directly for the table. That handicap privilege, man. I thought she wasn't about that. I thought she wasn't about taking shortcuts. Looking back, Liz frowns, but Damien simply nods in understanding. My peers in line, my peers in line besides us are watching as we casually roll up to the table where Ben is waiting. Crying how Mass Effect fans know racist hecklers are just good publicity. <laughs> oh my god, that interview. <clears throat> Olivia, Inko, you made it! Hey. Ignoring Olivia's clipped tone, I smile back at Ben. Of course we did. In a limo, no less. What better way to start off the night? Ben moves a clipboard to Olivia and she quickly fills in her name. <laughs> line skip yep after all this time of not wanting not wanting easy handouts here she is i lean over her shoulder and sign myself in too all right you guys are good to go what about idikin's memorial i wasn't ever told when i'd be speaking he hands over a slip of paper to olivia we'll be doing it at the end we want to let everyone enjoy their night first figured he would have liked it that way Looking at the sheet, looking at the sheet over Olivia's shoulders, I see that it's a collection of bullet points related to Idikin's eulogy. Olivia scowls and cripples, crumples the sheet into a tiny ball be between her palms. Uh oh, Olivia! I have a speech ready, Ben. Look, I know it's just backup, just in case. All right, nothing can go wrong. Ah. <sighs> She tosses the balled-up paper into her wheelchair compartment. Let's go, Winko. All right, see you inside, Ben. Below her breath, Olivia mutters. Hope not. Oof. Ben's gonna get punched. All right, drink time. Honestly, this just gives me the vibe that there's going to be separate ways after graduation and not much dread. Mm, water. We move past the check-in, venturing deeper into the halls of the venue. Out of us, an open sort of an open set of double doors leads into the main hall. Near the side we enter, several rows of neat round tables. The other half is reserved for the dance floor. So I, I was watching someone else's stream, and with the Christmas music here and the, all that, would would this be considered a Christmas game? Hold on, hold on. Let me let me make that a poll even. Hold on, hold on. Let me make this a poll. Bring out the good old polls. 
Is Wani... Oh, why is Caps Locks on? Is Wani... Hug... Uh, hut! Hut! I, I can't spell. Later, a Christmas game. Yes. No. Start poll. Vote it up, guys. I wish I could hide this. I need to hide the poll. Let me move. Actually, I'm going to yank chat out from YouTube and move this over to here. There we go. Yes. Die Hard's a Christmas Story. Why not Gator? Should probably ignored Inko and read those notes. No spoilers. Don't no spoilers. Just speculation. Absolutely. It is a gift after all. All right. Let me tab over to the game again. On the far side, a large stage for live performances. Nobody seems particularly interested in the Christmas music that echoes from the wall-mounted speakers. And I have to burp. <laughs> I think. Thank you, Acid Reflux. Now that we're here, I didn't think they'd take the winter part so literally. Drapes of white and... Drapes of white and light blue hang along the halls. All the table centerpieces look like crystalline statues shaped into snowflakes. Come on, just get it all out. Come on, body. Get it all out. Even the large chandelier hanging above the crowd seems to have drooping icicles dangling from it. Above us is a giant glass ceiling that opens to the night sky. Very good guessers in chat. Better than me on the first run. Two weeks. As far as I'm aware, it's the only Christmas game. Just speculation. First, your name is hard. Second, agreed. What? Anyways. There's too much light pollution to make out any con constellations, but the moon is real pretty. An image comes to mind immediately. Lights dimming, move music slows to something soft. The only real source of light is the moon hanging overhead. Right, Jester's here. Oh, dang. How did I miss Jester? Jeez, I'm sorry, Jester. Good to see you here. According to Ross from Accursed Farms, there are other Christmas games. <laughs> Damn, this place brings back some memories. Yeah, we, we've seen a lot here. A true moonlit dance. I wonder if I can make that happen. It would be nice. This isn't the only room, of course. Off to the sides in several directions are doors that lead to the other halls and rooms. Olivia's looking around at other exits, too. Well, we made it. What do you want to do? I gesture towards the dance floor. Watch. Watch. It's going to be it's gonna be the eulogy room. Feel like getting jiggy with it? Olivia gets a, gives a wincing smile. I thought you were supposed to be cool. But dancing... I don't want a lot for Christmas. Oh my god, not even in this game can I fucking escape it. Oh no. No, I think I'd rather die. Based Olivia. My god. Ugh. I can't believe I'm looking at the poll and it's almost like half and half. My god, you guys are you guys are ruthless. Somewhere around here is a room they set up for Idikin. Yeah, I know her I know her le well. I knew she was gonna go for it. Alright, yeah, we should pay our respects to him first before anything else. Alright. Olivia's tail guides my wrist as I push towards one of the exits. Mar Mariah Carey jump scare, yes. Olivia punching go, please. The memorial room isn't hard to find, and it's still as pathetic as it was the last time. She's thawing as we speak again. Oh god, I work in a store they do Christmas early. The smaller room, well lit and with little furniture. 
On the far end, a framed picture of Eidekin and some of his old pictures from his classroom. Some from him, some from his students. There's a few other students here, paying their respects. Olivia taps my wrist for a third tail, and I let go. I walk alongside her as we approach the portrait. I wonder when this was taken. Can't be that long ago. Looks just like he did earlier this year. <clears throat> Olivia doesn't seem like she's j ready just yet. <laughs> the dollar store memorial. Yeah. Our, our boy Idakin deserves justice, dude. This, this is Ben's doing right here. This is 110% Ben's doing. I hope Ben becomes homeless. Cute tail. I'm going to chat. Surely they'll keep Mariah Carey cased within a karmically large slab of ice this time, right? <laughs> Alright, how about we end the poll? I think you all voted. Where is it? How many people voted? 42 with... Okay. 62 say uh, yes. 38 say no. So yeah, I'll accept that. This is a Christmas game, guys. Merry Christmas. Maybe the real memorials. The love. I mean, friends we've gained along the way. Who Ben's memorial next? Yeah, but hold on. If, oh, if I could just Photoshop real quick. Just put Ben right there. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll shitpost real quick. Hold on. Ben, I want to hug that gator. I know I'm I'm holding up the game here. All right, Ben's is okay. It's a it's a PNG. Perfect. We'll save this. Is Ben neutral? Thank you for putting up with my shit posts. I I do it for you guys. Um, image. Ben! Browse. Pictures. Where are you, Ben? Get ready for Ben jump scare. I don't know how big this is going to be. Okay, there's Ben. Time to work my little Photoshop magic here, guys. Give me a moment. There you go. Bootleg Ben Memorial. It's Ben's Memorial, guys. Until you get to the speech. It looks like a memorial bot from Craigslist. Ben sure put some effort into it. <laughs> and along came Ben. Who could stand being in a room with Naomi or Ben? I meant immediately after Idikin dies. Sorry. Sorry, the she's flowing as we speak got me laughing. It says doing Memorial Day later. I know, I'm I'm slow. Yeah, should I, like, really put my effort into this and really, like, get the head just right? Hold on, guys. I, I, this is, like, so super tiny for me. I have to, like, put on magnifying glasses. Uh, that's probably as good as I can get it. Here, let me check my own stream real quick. What does that look on my stream? I'm sorry for just taking... Oh, that's actually not that bad. <laughs> there we go. Plus S to spit. Yes. He has set on his face. Okay, okay. Press P to piss. You guys and your body fluids. My God. All right, all right. Enough, enough Ben shit posting. Be gone, Ben. Be gone, Ben. All right. Um, let me pause my stream. Bring Gator back up. I'll give her a bit of privacy. Ben died when Mia sat on his face. That's kind of how I'd like to go. <laughs> Just not with Mia. I wait outside the memorial room, leaning against the wall. I can see a bit in the main hall from here. The music swap, swapped from the fest, festive to proper upbeat dance music. In fact, I'm pretty sure I see. Yep, Liz's head towers over the rest of the students, spinning and bouncing rhythmically, just like a metal spring. I'm sure Damien's doing his best to keep up. Basin. Put a Ben punching bag in the room. That's too much work. 
Oh no, chat's catching up to what I said. <laughs> hey, body fluid gotta be useful for something. <laughs> hey, we all have our fantasies, guys. Be nice. I must be having a blast. I'm glad. Man, it's still so sur surreal to be here. This is Cannon's... Where is Eidekin's wife? Does he have one? You think she would have been here for the memorial, huh? Or was was he like a... Were they divorced or separated? It's been over. His wife went to get the milk. Here, we'll do something to fuck this up. Ending for is when Napoleon comes and saves the day. I'm pretty sure Mrs. Eidekin is past tense. Oof. I thought I'd end up on a date with someone at an event like this. I've seen all sorts of stuff in it, like in the movies, but to actually experience it gives me the jitters. Yeah, he does remember the feather pen. Oh yeah, he does have he does have a wife, Osbro. One big night to make the sparks fly. Olivia touches my hand, using the other to wipe out her eyes. Yeah, she uh, he has a wife. Just, you don't hear much about her. Hey, are you ready to go? She nods. Yeah, thanks for waiting. The music's changed in the ballroom. Olivia looks over and smiles. Tempting, very tempting, but uh... It is time for food. Feed me, Inko. Feed me. <laughs> I guessed it right. I know this girl, dude. It's a match made in heaven. I know this girl. I didn't actually eat lunch today. That's turning into a bad habit. Winter formal, and then lo along came Abraham Lincoln. Would Abraham Lincoln be a dinosaur? I think he'd be a dinosaur. I mean, apparently Raptor Jesus exists. Maybe she's grieving in her own way. Hey, dude, I hope this... Is a Look at the chat just spam the freaking... I need to figure out what's going on with stream elements that causes just chat uh, diarrhea all over the screen. I apologize, guys. Uh, hey, dude, this is... I hope this is the happy ending, because last one, ending one, God, that was so depressed. This isn't going to be as... This isn't going to be as sad, but it's not going to be happy. Ben dies, forfeit all mortal meats to the gator. Yes. Remember, he died not too long ago. Yep. I know, I spent all day writing, reading, rewriting, rereading, on and on. I get you. Come on. I think I saw where they were serving food. Zoop. Passing through the main hall once more, Olivia's hunched over something. Her phone. I crank my neck and around her shoulder to get a better look. She's carefully studying pictures she's taken of her written speech. Ah, uh, seeing that the room must have renewed her drive. Ben is already dead inside. That's looking a lot better than one so far, I'd agree. You'll do great, Olivia. I hope so. I have to get this right. Are we just going straight to the speech now? We didn't even get to eat, it feels like. Oh my god, freaking acid reflux, please. If you want, we can find a table first. And I can get us dinner and give you a bit of extra time if you want. Would you? Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Olivia points me to the table in the corner, furthest away from the commotion. Inko hiding the fact that he is Kratos. Ben is actually a clone of Mia. A, a male swapped of Mia, that'd be crazy. Where, where's his testosterone? Oh, it's oh, it's because he's emasculated. I get it. If if he had the testosterone, he'd be too. He'd be way more powerful than Mia. And go to Olivia, girl, girl. But show her we won't be a punching bag. Girl, uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just gonna go back. Just like our spot in the lunchroom at school. How about that? You want meat, right? You know it. Oh. oh, she sat down. I was like, what is she doing? At these types of events, they would either have a catering or meal tickets. At least when I attended with my parents. But judging by the sights of my peers carrying small plates of food, it's a simple buffet. 
horse catering to some 100 active seniors is bound to go wrong. The, sense, the scent of spliced meat wafts through the spacious hallway. I can only imagine how Damien would feel right about now. What's the hug count? I've lost count through all the endings. Someone, will, someone in chat will count. I follow the movement of the crowd, letting the finer-nosed dinosaurs pinpoint the locations of the buffet for me. As the ambient music dies down, the chatter starts to grow louder. I turn to the corner of the hallway and find myself exactly where I want to be. Buffet stations run parallel along with each other, along each walls in this cafeteria-esque room. Anyone Ben defends Livia just because they are a couple. <laughs> I might be off. All right, greet it. Oh, wait, be off of your assumption. I thought you were leaving. Whoops. Don't leave. There's even a chef in a grill in the corner, preparing, prepping personal select cuts of meat to specification. Most of the dinosaurs struggle to remain civilized in the pre presence of this kind of food. Having skipped a meal, I don't know if Olivia would fare much better. Nearly every station is swarmed with high school seniors. I walk over to one of the few tables in the room that's still open. Salad bar. <laughs> See y'all in two days. All right, Lemon. Take it easy. I'm gonna watch the bad ends later. We'll be here. You could definitely get expelled. Hmm, I'm getting some pretty good ideas. I'll impress Olivia with the nicest darn looking meal she's ever seen. That'll be great for soothing her anxious nerves and setting a romantic tone. Taking and balancing a tray in one arm, I consider how to best arrange a full dinner properly. Wait. A video I had recently... Oh, here, here comes the dumbassery, guys. Get ready. I'm going to take a drink. Catering for dinos must be a nightmare. Yes. I feel a bathroom break coming on, but I'm going to try and hold it. Video I had recently watched starts replaying in my head. Here we go. <clears throat> or should I say, and here we go. Remember, the most important part of a high quality meal is the garnishing. Okay, I'll start here and get some and get some veggies around the edges of the plate. It's framing like in a painting. And then I'll go find the best meats to fill in the rest. I start waiting in line, eyeing the main courses as it slowly moves forward. And some of the decent variety, I can really work with this. Hey, mind if I cut in? Damien? Hey, thanks, don't mind if I do. Can you wait in line like everyone else? I did, the first time. This is round three. <laughs> no, getting no use getting annoyed. If he gets beat up in the parking lot later, it's his own problem. Today we play How Dumb Is Inko. Kind of dumb, dumb, freaking dumb, or borderline retarded. So, how's your night going? It's going well. Olivia and I are having a great time so far. Hey, that's great. Liz and I have been dancing like crazy. It's a blast. Gotta say, I'm happy for you. Sorry for being unsure earlier when you first two became an item. Looks like I was completely off the mark. Don't sweat it, man. Yeah... Got two plates for yourself. I see. Smart. Should have done that. I should have done that. Why is he giving a gator veggies? Yeah, I know, right? You know your girl has a big appetite and doesn't care how pretty the dish looks. Run with that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta make it look as disgusting as possible. You gotta make sure those meats are fucking slimy and greasy. I know the way to her heart. Inko's a dumbass. Ha, huh, no. One's for Olivia. He cocks an eyebrow. You sure? Yeah, I'm gonna go put... I'm going to put everything into prettying it up. That's her before food, son. It is now. I know what I'm doing. They're finally at the front of the line, and I start carefully picking out the best cuts and strips of various meats on display. I saw a guide on this once. It'll end up crazy romantic. Romantic, huh? Oh, hey, Bacon! Welcome back. You're just in time to witness ending two. Inko, you were doing so well. 
She likes turkey more than duck. I drop the roasted mallard with the tongs and grab the preferred bird. You'll see. It'll be great. If you say so. I'm sure it'll be fine then. Damien just loads his plate up with stacks upon stacks of briskets and fillets. Fillets. Nearly forgetting to use the tongs at all. That's Damien. Once he has his plate stat high, he gives a salute and slinks back out of the room. I, however, still have a mission to do. Did this ending already come with Olivia in the hospital and everything? No, this one's different. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, Nario. There's a few more lines for things like sides, like side dishes. This is going to be perfect. 20 minutes later and two trays of perfectly picked meals are balanced precariously in my hands. And you know what? I'm going to take that bathroom break, guys. I'm going to let you guys stew with what's going to happen, be happening next. So take it easy. All right, I'm back. What, what do I usually do with every game? Should get some cafe music going. Boo-hoo, I had to pee. All right. Let's get going. 20 minutes later and two trays of... I already read that. It came out pretty great, I guess. I haven't used the condiments to my advantage, leaving the perfect dots of flavor where they'll be most effective. I hope Olivia likes it. Here we go. Ta-da! I slide Olivia's tray before her. A part of me is irked that she'd have to lower her elbows on the table. Even resting her head on her hands. Sheesh, Inko, you took so long. I thought you were going to bring back like an, an entire cow or something. She smiles and rolls her eyes when she sees the tray. Very funny. Come on, where's the... Where's the real one? Carf music. Yeah, we're going to play the Karf music, guys. Hmm. Her smile fades. This is it? Were the lines really that bad? What do you mean? Like, were there a lot of people? There's barely anything on the plate. What is she talking about? That's a cuck... That's a cut of rare cooked filet mignon, and the turkey breast with scallions and asparagus, plus some slices of salmon sashimi on the side. All properly garnished, of course. 
My plate is exactly the same. And while it looks and smells delicious, did I mess up? You think? Uh, yeah. Lines out the door. I'll run back for seconds. Hopefully it'll clear up when I finish this. I'm sorry. I tried to arrange it nice, like we're at a fancy restaurant. She nods, she nods and stabs a fork through the piece of salmon. Well, I appreciate the thought. It does look pretty. Thanks. Once more recalling proper etiquette, I slice my own steak into tiny morsels, savoring each small bite of succulent meat. Seeing where the simp ending is in this, yeah. <clears throat> He's not even a good simp. Dude, I could simp better than this guy. Olivia doesn't even doesn't look as enthusiastic about the meal as I do. I always believe that the presentation helps il elevate the flavor of the food. But the sight of Olivia picking hers apart with a look of disinterest leaves a sour taste in my mouth. As we continue eating, I notice the cola in my glass begin to ripple and fizz a lot more than usual. Is that an earthquake? Oh, it's going to be uh, Ferris, isn't it? Is this an earthquake? Thunk. Yep, Mr. Ferris. Good evening, you two. It's Mr. Ferris. Wow, I haven't seen him since he gave the bad news. Yeah, I forgot. I don't know if people were mentioning in the last ending, but yeah, he's finally got some style. Dude's even got some gloves. Holy shit. <laughs> dude came. Dude came. Uh, he came prepared. So cooked that English isn't their main language. So this is so cooked. It's sm smoked in eight languages. All right. <clears throat> he glances over at Olivia. That's right. He had to tell her too. So he's probably here to check up on us. He's seated down with a heaping plate of dinner. Olivia looks up from her plate longingly at it. Whoa. Hey, Mr. Ferris. Dang. Nice outfit. Thank you. I actually picked it out myself. Why is he such a giant? Mr. Ferris with the drip. Yes. Wow, you're getting... He predicted it. No, I've already... I already uh, got spoiled the ending's titles, dude. I've gotten spoiled of them before ending one. Wow, you're getting some fine taste. That means a lot. Thank you. Are you chaperoning? I am. Although it'd be more accurate to say ATF. No, narc me. <laughs> what is this? He's trying to do the lingos. Turns out when you organize an event with a hundred of teenagers, some of them decide it's not it's not enough to try and bring their own fun. I've lost how count I've lost count of how many brand new flasks I've confiscated. <laughs> Between you and I, the other staff plans on making sure it all doesn't go to waste after the party's over. They're stealing the kids' drinks. <laughs> Didn't bring the gold chain. Gotta go to sleep. All right, extremist, have a good night. So far, this seems okay. It does. <clears throat> oh, brother. Taking a short break from my own meal, I saw you two hidden away here in the corner. So, how goes it? Is the night treating you well? Now we're having fun. It's going good. I'm just trying to memorize my memorial speech for later. Of course, I should have guessed. The whale man proceeds to bite into... Ugh, Damien was right. It's hard to watch. <laughs> oh, he's got his mouth open. <laughs> my god. That's like, it's like more mustache. Oh god. Last I saw you two, it was a terrible occasion. So I'm glad to see that both of you have bounced back. Augur's a great plan, old guy. Oh, excuse me. Thanks. That's a pretty stern look you have, Olivia. It's nothing. Listen, don't worry about your speech. I'm sure it'll be great. No need to overwork yourself. Relax a little. It should be a fun night, not a stressful one. You're right. Yeah, Olivia, don't worry too much about memorizing a script. You should speak from the heart. If anyone knows how to pay respects to Idakin, it's you. Yeah, that's kind of the problem. Nobody else here would understand most of what I want to say. 
They don't know Eidekin like I did. How am I supposed to summarize everything he meant to me in five minutes? This ending is surprisingly going better than I expected so far. He already did on the train. <clears throat> Have some faith, Olivia. People will understand when you speak from the heart. Yeah, sure. Ninko's right, Olivia. People are genuinely empathetic, after all. Uh-uh. And I knew it was going to be Ben. Misery loves company. I, lo I follow the source of the voice, spotting Ben as he approaches the table with a wide smile. Everybody's experience lost, Olivia. You'd be surprised just how much they'll understand. As Ben takes a seat, Olivia doesn't look happy. In fact, she looks noticeably more upset than she did five seconds ago. Good evening, Benjamin. You've done a bang-up job organizing tonight. Design of it, the design of it wasn't all me. The student council all worked together, and we really fucked up the eulogy room, so... No, actually, that was all me, Mr. Ferris. It was all me. Of course, a lot of the other decorations are just reused from year to year to, as well. Ben skillfully forks several vegetables together into one bite. And that's when we punch Ben right, right, Spongebob? He seems content that Olivia is actually tolerating his presence. Um, if I might be... If I may be a bit open here, I want to thank you guys for being here. I'm so relieved this is going off without a hitch. I've been crazy nervous myself that things wouldn't go well. Like, if I mess up, I might as well spit on his grave too. Those kind of thoughts plagued me the entire time I worked on this. Why is that? Because Mr. Eidekin was the best teacher. The table is shaking under my wrists. Looking over, I notice how Olivia's free hand clutches the edge of the table tightly. Honestly, I loved his classes the most. He really had a way with teaching. It's something... It, you tell he's bullshitting. He's using those Mia lessons to bullshit, I bet. It's something in his tone. I can't help but note that all, how all of his words of praise for our teacher simply angered Olivia. Yeah, he went above and beyond. He was really inspirational. Olivia grunts her own agreement. She's really gripping the table's edge like she's trying to snap it in two. So I'm just really glad I'm doing Eidekin proud. I feel like I really got him, you know? God, you know what? I'm not doing this. Inko, we're dancing. <laughs> my girlfriend grabs my arms and starts dragging me from the table. Oh, Olivia, what's wrong? Through grit, teach, through grit teeth, she responds accordingly, or roughly. Look at that chat. This is where Goku comes in and Kamehameha's the fuck out of Ben. <clears throat> Just feeling that holiday spirit, Inko. Okay. Oh, uh, have fun. She doesn't even look back at Ben or Mr. Ferris as we shove our way through the crowd towards the dance floor. She's still tugging me along with her tail around my wrist. As the upbeat music grows louder, I can barely hear Olivia grumbling to herself. A nerve. What does he know? Just trying to make himself feel better. And feel the tension within Olivia through her tail squeezing roughly around my wrists. A tension that melts away from her when a gentle stroke of my thumb runs over the scaly appendage. Olivia's breath leaves her slowly, the exhale seeming to take all of her frustration with it as she slows down. And once it's all gone, her body goes slack. I have to actually catch her tail before it hits the floor, and I earn an appreciative smile from her before we continue towards the dance floor. Eventually, enough students are displaced and we have a selection of floor, a section of the floor to ourselves. I only now just realize the situation I'm in. It's time to dance with the wheels. Good news, I do in fact know how to dance. Several years of tagging along to the business parties made sure of that. Even then, I actually looked up some guides yesterday to keep myself refreshed, just in case. This guy and his fucking guides, dude. Does this guy even have a singular, original thought of, of himself? To himself? For himself? I let YouTube think for me. I let the internet think for me. I'm Inko. 
Bad news, I don't know how to bust it down epic style. Even as a quirked up human with a little bit of swagger, I'm not goaded with the sauce. The very concept of busting a move is foreign to me. I've only ever seen it in shows and occasionally from game characters during a live stream. Ever notice how Ben is blue, has pink eyes, and Mia is pink and has blue eyes? Huh. Don't be stupid. It can't be that hard. Hey! Olivia's moving and grooving, bobbing in her chair and rolling her shoulders. Wow, I'm an idiot. This is just how anyone dances when they're jamming in a car. She pauses a second when she notices me staring. Come on, what are you waiting for? Don't tell me you're too refined to do even this, rich boy. Wow. I'm messing with you. I know you're not. You're just a dork. Doesn't take long to match her rhythm. As we dance, her small smile slowly evolves into a radiant grin. Her annoyance after that dinner is completely gone. A thing of the past. Yeah, we know he's an iPad kid. I've, I've made... I've made that... I've made that judgment so many times. If I let Coco Melon train my kids, raised and died by the melon, <laughs> God. even when the song ends and a new one starts, we seamlessly bridge into a new rhythm. Everything else fades away until it's simply us, lost to time and the world caught up in the music now. Eventually, the track swaps over to a slower tempo. Olivia takes the cue to check in the time on her phone. Oh man, it's about time. She shows me. 9.20. We still have time. Olivia shakes her head. Not much. I need to prepare. Don't let tech babysit your kids, folks. She looks pretty in that dress. Yeah, she does. Oh, but the music has just got good. I was wanting to show... Sorry, I can't, Inko. I really need, me I really need to make sure it goes well. Be here for me, please. Okay. I understand. Thank you. Olivia takes both of my hands in hers, weaving our fingers together tightly. I can feel her pulse, pulse beat through our linked hands, and she must be feeling mine too. Her eyes close slowly, and I can feel her heartbeat slow fall, fall in line with mine. Finally, she gently lets go. She turns her wheelchair and heads off in another direction, not breaking eye contact until she's lost, nearly lost in the crowd. Still showing off, not listening. Well, that was it. That was amazing. It's a shame we couldn't get a proper slow dance, though. Yeah, a shame. A few people glance my way. Let me guess, M Mia? It's gonna be Mia. Get stood up. Come on, just show Mia. Oh crap, I'm just standing here on the dance floor like a chump. I cut through the crowds to reach the sidelines. There's chairs set up along some of the walls to the rest in. Why does Inko seem so, I don't know, bland in this route, like he's going with the flow? It's more of a background character here, yeah. Am I just being selfish? We just dance for what, an hour? It's not like I can, can't ever dance again. Olivia has responsibilities. And she takes them seriously. That's what makes her so great. She wasn't like that in the start of the year, was she? <clears throat> Across the, the dance floor, I catch sight of Damien with his date. The two sway along, carefully stepping around each other. Damien's actually struggling, but Liz holds him tight, taking him through the motions. While the song goes on, he gets more confident in his strides. More impressive is how he seems to handle her neck, which makes the girl's head swoon and melts in his embrace. By the end of it, it almost looks like he was the one teaching her. After a few songs, the lights fade out more. Looks like I was right in my guess earlier. This must be the last song. Fireworks above the building burst into bright flashes of color. Damien and Liz. Never grew a spine or learned to listen. User just subscribed. Well, thank you, user. <laughs> that is quite the name. The iridescent sparks fall away with each cacophonous boom, some into colored shapes, but most just a kaleidoscope of fading embers. While the song is eclipsed by the blast of fireworks, I still see couple I still see couples lost within the gentle melody. 
Even Liz and Damien are still dancing, ignorant of the fiery display overhead. As the, last, la, as the last song fades out and the lights start getting warmer, it stings a little. On stage, Principal Scaler steps up to the lone microphone and gives a thumbs up to have it turned on. Barry Kitten just subscribed. Thank you. Thank you for the sub. Oh God, what is she wearing? <laughs> she looks like a wine ant. My God. Principal Scalers is the cool wine ant. I'm going to take a drink. Oh my God. Oh, actually, as soon as I got the pole out of the way, I can get second chat over here. Oh no, I can see it coming. Well, we'll see. Oh. Good evening, everyone. I hope you've all had a wonderful night. The remaining chatter gets quieter. Thank you all for coming to tonight's event. I'm happy to see so many participate in one of St. Hammond's oldest traditions. Although this year we have to cut it a bit short for a special occasion. As you all know, earlier this year we lost one of our most beloved teachers at St. Hammond. Idekin taught for many years and gave it his all to helping his students learn. Sly Cooper. Wait, what? Brown jacket just fucks things up. Yeah, it's a weird brown jacket. Not single raptors in your area. Drinking wine. Getting drunk. So we have a few words of service we've prepared to send off the night. To send the night off. First, we will be hearing from our student council president, Benjamin McKnight. Ben approaches from off stage, gracefully taking Scaler's position in front of the microphone. There's a bit of polite applause and Principal Scaler moves back. I notice a few students already leaving out the back door. Pricks. Well, whatever. Thank you, Principal Scaler. When I learned of Mr. Eidekin's passing, my whole world seemed to just break. I had known him for four years, but in that time he had become a very important person in my life. I didn't want to draw another pose. Ben is going to boast, yeah, probably. Oh, Sly Cooper's love interest. Is that the style she was going for? He was a mentor figure to me, someone who guided him. Though Ben spoke passionately, he prattled. The student council president made his points and then some, like he didn't want to stop talking. Oh god, Lunara. Even, the, even so, that the next speaker, not Olivia, was, familiar, was a familiar white and black raptor girl. Only had a few minutes of her own words. And I'm to... I hope I'm not starting a frickin' migraine here, my god. She was much more su succinct, giving a traditional prayer in his name. And then Olivia. God, this is the wrong time to start a freaking headache, dude. Here, if you don't mind, I'm going to probably pop some IB. I'm sorry, guys. Give me a moment. All right, I'm back. 
Um, let me take that down. So what's chat going on about delayed? Yeah, the chat is delayed. I'm sorry about that. I need to look into that because when I when I used to stream on Twitch, this chat was snappy. It was very responsive. But when I go to bring it to YouTube, suddenly it take it it does constipated shits everywhere constipated diarrhea dumps and it just it fucking explodes all over the screen and it's like my god <clears throat> praying a certain someone doesn't show up pork knows what i'm talking about off to make pancakes a certain someone i thought we banned some people last time but yeah i got like the weirdest migraine i don't know it's like a really hard pain like the side of my head just above my ear it's like my god when did that start <clears throat> all right enough bitching let's get back to the kitchen finally the girl took the microphone from its stand and handed it to olivia as she wheeled onto the stage olivia moves into the spotlight with a look of determination on her face before she played undertale she takes a moment breathing deeply before scanning over everyone still inside the room <clears throat> i just muted them not banned well hopefully they got the message I flashed her a thumbs up, though I don't know if she can see me under that bright light. Finally, she brings the mic over to her mouth and begins. It's the one most I real, real life people are living. Or what? Not so bad lit ending. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. Hello, my name is Olivia Halford. Many of you know of me, the quiet girl in the wheelchair at school. But for the longest time, Idikin was the only person who actually showed he cared. The only teacher to truly teach me. The only one to really reach out. In a dark, lonely world where I thought I was all alone, he was there for me. And not along as Olivia talks, absorbing her genuine words, that, that's part of why I was asked to talk today. I, can hope to say, I can't hope to say I was his favorite student, but he was definitely my favorite teacher. From a child, I was always had a passion for art. <clears throat> oh yeah, we're gonna get to the best ending. Not here though, not not tonight. I've had many teachers throughout the years learning. After so long, I had just had the impression that none of them actually liked art. Rather, that to them it was just another subject to teach equally disinterested students for throwaway grades. And I could say none of them went above and beyond the way he did for his students. She takes a pause to catch her breath, and I notice her eyes still half-lidded as she peers left and right. That spotlight must be poorly angled. It looks to be aimed right at her eyes. Idikin was one of the best, and he was taken from us too soon. But he does live on, through the students that he really did teach. That's how he taught, giving it his all, not getting discouraged by apathetic classes of ungrateful, unwilling students. If just one student was there to learn, he would teach them all he knew. And I'm honored to be have been that for him. Get ready, chat. What do we what what's happening? Uh-oh. <clears throat> There's some whispers around me, and I notice more and more some of our peers are quietly speaking during her speech. I wave my arms, silently pleading, she notices me. Sadly, because of that damn spotlight, Olivia cannot take my hint to, for her to real to for hint to reel her speech back on course. In his prime, he was known for his portrait work. Controversial as his efforts were, there was no denying his skill. And though I don't do portraits so often, and though I'm not as skilled as him yet, someone like me was able to win an art contest in just months of his class. Teaching like that takes serious talent and a serious heart. And through his effort and those he's affected, he'll live on. I'll continue to make great work. I'll continue to do his name justice and carry his torch. As his apprentice. That's what he deserves the most. Thank you, and have a good night. Silence. A bit more polite clapping, but also some murmurs from the crowd. Is she alright? That's it? Did, did she just say we were ungrateful and unwilling? No, that isn't it. That's, that isn't what I meant. Murmurs grow into chatter. Olivia looks my way, confusion etched in her features. That's it? That's the whole speech? I don't know who said it, but it was said with an angry tone. That was just a cheap puff piece about yourself. 
That one. That was hurtful. No, no, of course not. I just... Olivia's hand fumbles for something. That sounded selfish in the end, I guess. You know how classmates can be. Yeah, that's why I don't have any more school friends. <laughs> I barely have any school friends, dude. The chatter is growing louder as Olivia pulls a small white ball from her chair's storage... It's guts! <clears throat> her hand... Oh, wait, it's the, the paper. Never mind. Her hands shake, the sound of paper crumpling coming from the speakers. Ben's notes. Um, to, to continue, Idakin was an important member of the community and... <laughs> oh my god, that was really the whole thing? Are you serious? How insulting to Idakin. You should be ashamed. Woman moment. My mind is scrambling. What can I even do? The damage has already been done. No, it's fine. So long as Olivia calms down, she can have a good comeback. I got to do something. You're doing great, Olivia. Keep it coming. Oh, she instantly rips the paper in two. Uh-oh, he should have just kept his mouth closed. Who was that? Are you mocking me? What is wrong with all of you? Shit, that wasn't what I meant. The principal rushes on stage. Olivia bats her arm away. No, let go of me. A vicious growl permeates through her clenched teeth. Silver, eye glares dag Silvery, silver eyes glare daggers at every person still in the room shouting back at her. <laughs> Woman moment. Enraged, she smashes the papers in her hands back into a ball and chucks it at the crowd. Fuck you all! None of you knew him like I did. Idikin meant more to me than anyone at fucking else. Olivia, please. The speaker lets out a terrifying noise as the microphone is tossed aside. Olivia turns away from the angry crowd, rolling herself off stage and towards the back exit. For a moment, I can see Damien and Liz among the churning sea, churning sea of, of bodies. <clears throat> they all looked at me with an utter confusion and shock. Coming back to my senses, I run out the hall and chase after Olivia. Oh boy. Pushing the side exit open, the frigid breeze outside of outside air hits my face. Where'd she go? I catch a glimpse of her turning to the corner of the building. Olivia, wait up! Olivia, wait! Fucking hell, hold on! It takes me a moment to catch my breath. What the hell happened back there? We're by the carport. There's crowds of people exiting the building. Some are waiting by the curb, probably for the valet or some other transportation. Her eyes level on me. Eyes a mixture of anger and pain. Olivia? Olivia, you just blew up out of nowhere at everyone. What's wrong? Olivia's on the brink of tears. Her enraged eyes well up with tears. Why, why didn't they get it? What did I do wrong? My teeth rattled painfully as I closed my mouth. I poured my heart and soul into these assholes. And look what happened. Ugh. It was all for nothing. Those freaks. You get it, right, Inko? Yeah, I do. Listen, it's not over. Of course it is. Idikin deserves better than this. What a disgrace. Look, there's a way to make it up. Olivia turns and sniffles a little bit. She's listening. Right now, things seem really down, I know. But the stage is probably still open. I'm sure if I just give the word, Ben or Scaler, they'll let you continue and you can apologize. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Uh-oh. Ink going his big fat mouth again. And that's not very simpish behavior of you, Inko. Oh my gosh, shut up! Idikin was wrong. All those assholes, even you, Inko. All they cared about was themselves. Well, I mean your speech. I took your advice, Inko. <clears throat> hey, I said tell you your story to them. I don't recall saying it, making it all about yourself. So sorry on my part. Maybe you should go back and apologize too. Fuck them, why should I? Because it'll make you look bad if you don't. Like I should give two shits about what they think of me. Well, I give two shits because it's going to make me look... Oh, here it comes. Here it is. Ending one Inko is back. 
He is back with a vengeance. <clears throat> Here, I need more Vaseline. My lips are chapping again. Give me a break. You should have just went back home and played video games. And now here you are, ruining your lives. Oof. I really shouldn't have said that. But I'm right though. I'm right though, aren't I? Are you seriously making this about you? It's not about me, but I'm trying to help you, so it affects me. She tries to yell something, but her voice cracks and breaks into a miserable growl. I watch as tears begin to stream for her still vicious eyes. Come on, Olivia. That's all I've ever wanted to do. Well, maybe I don't want you to help. Her voice is deep and stern. Excuse me. You don't really want that, do you? How do you know? You think you understand me? That you have me all figured out? That you know what I want? Fuck you, Inko. A hollow feeling resonates through me. She doesn't mean that. She can't. Then she... Look, Olivia, why don't we just go back home? We can talk about this, and maybe on Monday you can... Yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to go home. Here, let me call some... No, no, I'm going home alone. Seriously? Yeah, it's it's over. Over? What do you mean over? She turns her chair away from me, rolling herself down the sidewalk away from the venue. You can't walk home alone. Olivia, let's... Snap. That sound is unmistakable. I nearly just lost my hand. Fuck off. Want to follow after. Desperately try to reason with her. But my legs refuse to move. Part of me forces myself to watch Olivia as she slowly moves down the sidewalk. As the other students pass her by and toss hateful words her way. As the world itself seems to throw all of its vitriol on this wheel wheelchair-bound girl... Buffeting her with a blistering cold gus. As she waits at the metro station in view, I'm incapable of looking her way. Must be some punishment for what I had said, as I can see Olivia finally quake with tears at the situation. Just as Olivia wails in agony, the train comes, hiding her from me. It's Ollie over. Oh, oh it's Olivia over. <laughs> it is. <clears throat> Inko fucked up once again. That wail was the last thing I heard from her that night, though at times her haunting cry resurfaces in my memories, returning to tear up my heart without remorse, with no reason or warning as to why. You fucked up. Alone. I'm afraid. I've always heard the story. I've always heard the stories of events like proms ending with merriment and talks of after parties. The ride back home was silent. Yeah, he had to ride with f f probably Miz and Lee, I bet. Or Liz, what am I saying? Liz and Damien. I'm a dumbass. I open the door to my undercoat, undercoated house. The air feeling much colder than it did outside. I didn't bother turning the lights on as I hobbled through my empty halls. Yeah, better than E1, but not much. My movements are all robotic, each set up the stairs forced. The bedroom door swings open, but I can't be bothered to close it. My bed has never looked so inviting. Although maybe it's the other way around. Everything else is too cold. He's getting Olivia's depression, guys! The demon has moved. It's now possessing Inko. It's the new center of the universe. I just flump face first into it. I'm alone. Just the one of us. And I'm gonna kill myself. Just the one of us. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, enough jokes. Let me take a drink. Oh, 
I should probably grab another bottle of water. I'm sorry, guys. I'll be back. Watson with my earbuds here. They're tangled up again. It's like you, um, some random guy. Thanks for the song. It's like that th that meme where you just lay your your earbuds to the side and they just tangle themselves up for no reason. <clears throat> Anyways, the winter days dragged on endlessly during Christmas break. Something inside me just scra sca just sapped any and all strength from me. Wake up whenever I can't sleep anymore. Eat whatever my stomach wouldn't hurt. Stare at my computer's monitors without really acknowledging what was going on. Bare minimum of existing. The one singular thought that pervaded my mind was, I want to see her. Always becoming simp. I would find myself looking at my phone's messenger app, eyes glancing old, over the old pictures and messages I was sent. All of those doodles she sent me. Okay, who is this? No. That's spam, dude. You're spamming. You're going you're going in timeout. Don't do that. <clears throat> if I if I have to respect the chat, you guys gotta respect yourselves too. Like come on. <laughs> All of those doodles she sent me that meant nothing to her now. Now meant the world to me. Fingers tapping the digital keys with whatever words I thought. Asking her if she was okay. Asking if I could see her. Asking for forgiveness. Only for only for the words to vanish as my thumb held held down the delete key. In this cold and lonely room, I desperately wanted to reach out to Olivia. And each passing day I would muster up just enough courage to write a longer and longer message. But my courage would vanish by the end and I'd go back to simply existing, lost in an ocean of apathy in this room. It's Christmas Eve today. I got some new house robes for my parents, had them pre-wrapped and sent over. They'll open it when they get home tomorrow night. Everyone else is having a big meal with their families. They all got their own yearly traditions whenever old comedy gets put on like, on like a ritual. Before bed, the kids get to open the pre get, get to open one present early. I could talk. Everyone else stays up chattering with each other for a while. But not me. I'm just in my pajamas watching a show I don't even like. In senior year, next year I'll have taxes. Looking at my messenger again. I stare at the message I had composed. My thumb hover hovers over the backspace key. Breathe in, breathe out. Hey, oh boy. This ain't gonna be good, guys. <clears throat> I did it at last. And my heart thumps as I'm roughly, thumps roughly as immediately after I see the typing animation on my screen. Hey. God, this hurts to look at. My thumb wants me to mash away wildly on the keys. I write out an infinite number of things ju that just fly to the forefront of my mind. But I hold off and think until finally I decide. <laughs> you fucking asswipe! Dude. I need to punch and go, dude. That's that's not how you start this. Merry Christmas Eve. Or, right, Eve. I lost track of time. Same. Ouch. Ouch. What have you been doing? God, this hurts. 
in the most literal sense of the word, nothing. Nothing really, you? Dealing with Vinny, because <laughs> it's Christmas Eve. Decorating for tomorrow. Sounds fun. Yeah, fun. <laughs> oh. She included a drawn guts looking depressed. And a strange sensation overtook my face. It was my smile. I have forgotten what it felt like to smile in only just a week. So, you're still by yourself? Yeah. My fingers have moved without me realizing. Before I could explain, I saw Olivia typing a reply and held myself. <laughs> that sucks! Your parents suck. I know. Another rough thump of my heart rattled in my chest. Listen. I thought about that night. Don't fuck this up, buddy. I'm sorry for what I said. I fucked up, Olivia. Don't... Don't... Yeah, that's... There's the simp part. There's the simp. Please take me back. No, you don't say that. You could at least say, like, oh, I hope you could forgive me. And then leave it at that or something. Like, don't do this shit. I wait a few seconds. No response. Was it too much? Too little? What am I even doing? Yeah, you might as well just throw your phone away. I let my phone fall into my chest and rub my eyes. Idiot. Bzz. Okay. I'll give it another shot. <laughs> really? Man, Olivia is a fucking... Fucking saint. <laughs> Trying... Like, holy shit. She had every right to see that red flag and just swat him down. This bastard don't deserve her. My god. I gotta drink. Oh, thank you, Raptor Jesus. I swear I'm going to church every Sunday from now on. Thank you. Can I come over tomorrow? There's no one here. No. Let me guess, the parents aren't happy with him either. No, you... Probably shouldn't. There's a pause between her reply... There's a pause between her replies, time during which I feel my breath leaving me and my heart slowing in its beating. That came out bad. Look, I'm mostly over what happened between us. But it still hurt. I need some extra time. Don't want to make things awkward. You know? Some some of that squeezing feeling is back. I really jacked myself, didn't I? I guess I deserve it. If this is my price to pay. Yeah, alright. See you at school? Sure. I decided to flip on an old Christmas movie. It's one meant for kids, but I remember watching it once with my family. As I doze off, it's just a little less bitter. We texted more and more over the winter break. By the time I saw Olivia again at school, it almost felt like how things used to be. Almost. I had a lot of make up for her, after all. I was back in her good graces. It's more than I could have asked for, honestly. The rest of the school year seemed more like a formality, and instead I'd put up my efforts on just being there for Olivia. After all, it was the two it was just us two versus the world once we graduated. Another day of work. <laughs> Look at this guy. Look at this guy. He's got like a stubble growing. <laughs> God. Okay, how is he going to fuck this one up? Is there going to be some dis domestic dispute going on? 
Well, I cannot wait to see how he fucks this up. Another walk home through the shit show that is the urban rush hour. A walk home. He's walking. No car, no bus, no train. I say several car horns continue to blare at each other with reckless abandon. At least it's Friday. It's Fang Friday, guys. I learned the words linger in the air as a, as a faint evening breeze washes over me. Experience has taught me that walking home from my office building is faster than trying to drive through this mess. So he does drive. All right, I thought he was like a complete disaster. I briefly stopped to observe the source of the massive buildup. They've been doing construction on this intersection for the last three months. Damn it, I'm off work early today. Something about corporate reorganization, but that's usually code for downsizing. Is he going to get laid off? Oh, excuse me. Oh, boy. God. My fucking gut is, like, gassy today because of the acid reflux. At least I'll go to get to see Olivia in her prime. So she's painting. We're always so busy these days, but tonight can be special. I don't even remember the last time we went out to get together for a date night. So she's sure to love a nice dinner date. It'll be like old times. After another 15 minutes of dodging cars and homeless people. Ah, oh, those dang homeless people, man. I'm finally at my destination. Volcadera Gallery of Arts. Oh, let me guess. Livia has spoken with Elena and they come to an agreement to start producing and selling her artwork at Elena's gallery. And over the years, that arrangement changed as Olivia became a part-time assistant to Elena. It's a nice gig, but doesn't pay the most. Of course, it's just until her career really takes off. After that, it's beachfront life for the both of us. If the schedule she gave me is right, Olivia should be showcasing her work right about now. The inside of the gallery is dry and cool, in contrast to the hot and humid weather outside. Independent conversations echo throughout the room as I walk past the front desk. No one dares to question me. I think her showcase is in the East Ring, right next to Ikedin's old section. As I follow my vague memories, I come to a wide open section of the gallery. All right, I'm back. That was fun. Welcome back, Bacon. I spot Olivia not too far away. It looks like she's talking to someone. I approach, her, I approach her slowly to overhear the conversation, trying not to interrupt. You've made several comments earlier in this interview about your inspiration for your latest work. Do you want to elaborate on this? She's holding a tablet, tapping away as she speaks. A journalist, then. Oh, God! Oh, God! She's turned into a hippie! God, those eyes look like she's drink, drunk so much wine, dude. <laughs> Oh my god, what the hell happened? Holy shit. <laughs> Olivia, what did you do? What did Inko do? What did he do to you? Oh my god, I swallowed my water wrong. <laughs> oh my god. She's turned herself into an art piece and it's a disaster. <gasps> oh. Oh, this is bad. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness I'm taking a break from this tomorrow. Raptor Jesus, what happened to Olivia? Oh. I can't look at her, guys. I can't. Yes, yes, I can. Recently I've been looking into a lot into more into warmer torn tones. My usual palette palette flavored cool tones were the ev evocative of evening theming it's it's got me messed up i can barely read i can barely read guys the but for this series i wanted to tackle what comes after the nighttime vistas at least from daybreak to noon olivia finally notices my presence and turns her head to me inko did something happen what are you doing over here i wanted to surprise you well, that's nice. God, her eyes look so... Like, she she looks like she's just done. <laughs> Is he your husband, Miss Helford? Oh, no. We're just dating. 
Would you mind if I got some comments from him as well? Maybe useful. Mm, I don't know. I guess it'd be fine. Excellent. The woman turns to me, pushing her tablet within my well within my personal bubble. <clears throat> don't worry, it gets worse. Like I said, the apprentice thing went to her head. Oh god. You just quit your stream right now. Yeah, you would like that bacon. My god, if it's gonna get worse, oh god. I, I thought we were gonna get off easy, but I guess not. Miss Helford said you're Inko. Inko G. Nito. We've been an item for three years now. That is a big ass time skip. Three years since high school then. Yes, we met and started dating our senior year together. So, since you've been with her a while, you must be very familiar with her process as well. Probably not. I'd say so, yes. What could you tell me about Olivia's presence in the art world, then? Her work really stands out, yet her pieces aren't that widespread. Well, I can see Olivia's head shaking. Oh, she's glaring daggers. It's, it's a personal talk we've had more and more often these days. Tablet per pushes further into my space, urging me to speak. It's not that Olivia doesn't want her work to spread. It's just the majority of people that approach her have been from varying adv advocacy organizations for dis disabled individuals. Oh God. Oh God. It's getting, it's getting worse. Oh God. This is the worst I've seen her. <laughs> this, this is, this face right here is going to haunt my dreams. I'm going to have nightmares, guys. Pray for me. I don't see how that would be a problem. It isn't, honestly, but... Before I can continue, Olivia forces herself between the journalist and I. I think that's enough for now. The reporter reluctantly nods, politely excusing herself in the presence of Olivia's leer. Journalist. Journo. Yeah, journo is short for journalist. Look, Olivia, I... Olivia pulls me aside in a rounded corner, whispering angrily. What are you doing? I've told you, I've told you time and again, I'm not doing it that way. Okay, sorry. You shouldn't even be here. Shouldn't you be at work? I got to go home early today. Relax. And I wanted to see you. A gentle puff of air slips from her, lip, slips from her lips. Thanks. Hey, we haven't been somewhere in forever. Now that I have some time off, would you want to have dinner someplace nice tonight? You seem stressed. Olivia untenses herself a little. Dinner? Wow, I guess it has been a long while. Yeah, I think I'd like that. Great. Anywhere you have in mind you'd like to go? She closes her eyes in contemplation. No, nothing in particular. I'd be glad to relax a bit wherever. All right. You getting off work at the same time today? Yep, 5 p.m. <clears throat> Look, this interview is really important. This gal's from a pretty major publication. And I can't have this go wrong, all right? I really think this is my big chance. I get the idea. All right. Okay. Just relax, okay? You're doing great with the interview. Thanks. You'll do great, and tonight we can celebrate. Yeah. All right, you should go. I'm going, I'm going. On my way out, I wave back at the confused journalist while Olivia rolls back her direction to finish the interview. I walk home with a bit more pep in my step. Man, I really need this date, too. I'm getting a few butterflies again. I open the door and flick a light switch, revealing our dignified flat. There's not much furniture, with most of the floor being reserved for Olivia's art supplies and space to maneuver a wheelchair. Honestly, it looks a bit like an extension of the gallery she works at. Please leave. <clears throat> Some might call it messy, but I like to think of it as homely. On the way out of our bedroom, I pass the kitchen and catch a glimpse of the sink. I still need to wash the dishes and sweep the floor. Never mind that now, there's something much more important. I make it to the master bedroom, opening up the, the expansive wardrobe that lies just inside. What to wear. An hour of hygiene and fashion later, and I'm all cleaned up. He's wearing the same thing. 
I take a seat at the living room sofa, waiting patiently for Olivia to get home. It's a little after five. She'll probably be here in ten minutes or so. I haven't actually decided where I'll take her. It's got to be a barbecue. Somewhere like, uh... Man, we've been living here for ages and I don't know anywhere where anything is. My phone's old propriety map boots and I check around for restaurants within walking distance. Handful fal falafel? Looks great. Herbivore theme, so I can't. That means there must be a quick check in of search settings confirm it. Only carnivore locations. There we go. A refined list of nearby locations. One in particular is even marked as new. Simone's. It just opened a few months ago and it looks pretty neat. Checking their website, I see that they still have some available ta tables for tonight. The menu looks ex exquisite. All right, that decides it. I check the time, 5.15. Should have figured the foot traffic would have been bad today. It's Friday after all. Olivia should be here any minute. And she doesn't. Man, is it that bad? I should check up on her. Interview over? I'm surprised she's still going with Live Along as her name. No response. Is it still going on then? Jeez. Starting to get worried. A pit starts gathering in my gut. It's not you oh, let me guess. He he's 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 the cuck, isn't he? Or am I just hungry? No, I'm not eating before a date. Come on, Olivia, get home already. That's it. I'll just call her. If it interrupts the interview, it it interrupts the interview. I find Olivia's contact and please leave your message for shit. Oh, come on, is her phone off? Man, I guess a sandwich wouldn't hurt. My knees pop when I stand. Guess I was sitting for a while. I was busy my, well, while I was busy myself with a sandwich crafting, I could feel my worries bubble further. Maybe I should just go back to the gallery. No, if she if she left, it'd be way too easy for us to just pass each other. With nothing else to do, I flip on the TV. There's a new documentary series out that'll fill the noise nicely. I hardly pay attention to it, just getting bites into my little sandwiches and it's a little sandwich until it's all gone. Guilt pains me, but what was I supposed to do? I sigh and look out the window. Outside the unmistakable wail of an ambulance. No, of course not. That'd be stupid. Quit worrying. You alright? Hmm. Dang it, Olivia, can't can't this have just waited just one day? Ugh. How am I thinking? Knock that off me. Just need to have some faith. I'm getting worked up for nothing and we can just laugh about it over our dinner tonight. I'm just worrying over nothing. I'll just sit back and relax until Olivia arrives. Holy crap! I flip around on the couch. Fuck! From the loud thumping, I can already guess. She's not happy. It's cool wine ant time, guys! It's time to get drunk and abusive! Olivia's tail slams loudly on the floor in frustration as she wheels herself onto our living room. Olivia, what happened? I was getting worried. <laughs> God, there's that pose again. She almost looks normal. Almost. Oh boy. I'm gonna take a drink. Oh boy. I was at that damn interview. For hours! That fucking reporter! Holy shit, I need to punch something! Your interview didn't go well? What do you think? Olivia stops herself and exhales deeply. Sorry, no. No, it didn't. She loved my work. We were right there, ready to make this happen. And let me guess. Inko happened. Then she showed me her notes, and you know what they said? Differently abled. Passionately enabled. I tell her to drop the angle and she says she's not interested in the article otherwise. She was just there to make her shitty little story about disabled artists to ride my situation to stardom. She's, she tries to say it's mutually beneficial. For hours I'm trying to keep the conversation going to show her my process. Anything just to get her to say yes. 
I was right there, Inko. Right there. All I needed to hear was a yes. For once. God, why does nobody get it? It was all for nothing. Now I just... Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm sorry. I'm late. Can we just go on the date thing now? I'm hungry. Everything's closed, Olivia. Ooh, fucking fantastic. None of this would have happened if she just done it. Now I look like a desperate idiot, and I'm still stuck at this place making barely above minimum wage, and I don't even get a date. God, I'm just doomed to mediocrity forever. If it matters that much, maybe you should just accept... Oh, ho, 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 ho. Inko, it's time for you to go. Maybe, maybe you should just accept it. I didn't mean to mumble that. I hope Olivia didn't notice. The music did. And I think Olivia did. She noticed. What the fuck was that? Just giving me a chance to change what I said. I've gotten a few of those over the years whenever I broke some unspoken rule of hers. And I always capitulate because I figure that's what a good boyfriend would do. Except today. This was my only early day in a while. First time in years I could have felt like her boyfriend for once. Something boils over. No, no. No, no, no. I wasn't supposed to be like this. I can't bring myself to say anything more. I just sit in silence while Olivia starts tensing up. And what does that mean? You're supposed to support me. We're there for each other. That's what all this is for. I have been supporting you, Olivia. I love you. Then why? Her breathing is getting heavier. I see her claws poking out, pressing into her armrest. Those, scar those scared me once. She won't use them. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Domestic dispute? Oh, let, me, let me get some water. Thankfully, my headache's been gone. Olivia, listen to me. This is the first time in years that I could have taken you on a date. That we could have gone anywhere we wanted to. And we would have. We would have been back by now, having fun. And it was spent on even more of this stupid, stupid, stubborn nonsense. She sits aghast. Oh my god. But it looks like she saw a ghost. Jesus. Now, th this one's going to haunt my dreams, dude. My God. Who are you? I'm the guy that had to deal with this crap for three years now. I like you, Olivia. I love you. I want to do stuff with you. Can't you make it easy to deal with? Oof. Can you make it easy to deal with you? Oh, like you would know, your fucking parents aren't even around. They'd rather get shit-faced every night than deal with you once. My parents didn't abandon me to some, to some other poor family to raise me instead. Her brow furls and her eyes widen. Before I can bother feeling guilty about the statement, she roars. How could you? You know the situation I was in, you prick. And I'm just trying to make my shitty situation not shit. And it wouldn't be that way if you didn't demand everyone else play by your rule. Wait, this is Inko. And it would be that way if you didn't demand everyone else play by your rules. You're no different than those so-called phonies that abuse their disability except you're broke. Oh my fucking god, is it so much to ask for one person who gets it? Am I the insane one here? I don't need you turning on me too, you spineless sack of shit. Oh, she's crying. Is it really just the entire world conspiring against me to make sure I'm painting under a bridge with condiments and shit within the next few years? Is it so much to ask for one person to just not use me to climb the social ladder? If you're so concerned about it, then let them. It's been three damned years, Olivia. Face it, your career isn't, isn't, isn't not taking off because you refuse to let anyone actually see it. It's because you're so hung up about your stupid fucking wheelchair. Fuck you, you useless sack of shit, skinny. Ooh, yeah, domestic dispute. Yeah, that's that. Ooh, I almost spilt. That would not be fun. It's drink time. My god. This sucks.
Shit. That was too far. What, were, what are we doing? What's happened to us? Was it supposed to be like this? We stand motionless, just staring at the carnage of the vase. The water leaks across the tile. The flowers, a birthday gift from me to her, lay withered on the floor in pieces. Olivia finally meets my eyes. Her expression is horrid mix of shock and remorse. The fire has died. All the heat is gone. In its place is simply two burnt-out individuals in the reality that we had ignored for so long. Her head falls, and she rolls away to the office room we've turned into her studio. Its door creaks slowly before shutting softly. I... Grabbing a towel from the kitchen, I try to carefully collect the broken pieces of the vase. Not carefully enough, though, as my palm is caught on a jagged edge. <clears throat> Thankfully, the, to the towel staunches the small cut enough that I can, keep that I can clean up the rest of the damage. <clears throat> I set the damaged flowers in the sink, since there's a chance that some of them can be saved. The vase is a lost cause, though. As I look at it, all I feel... The sounds of sniffling reach my ears, and I look to the closed studio door. An idea comes to mind. Oh boy, you and your big ideas, Inko. Skinny, it's been so long. They don't use that one as much, do they? There's one last undamaged tulip in there. I could. You shouldn't. I should take to her and apologize for my harsh work. You, it can wait tomorrow, Inko. Oh, excuse me. Maybe she'd even apologize too. Maybe. But I don't even know anymore. Setting the last living flower into a cup, I fill it with some water. It looks so horrible. Petals are damaged. The stem is bent. Some of my blood is mixed with the water, making it look disgusting. If it were a picture, it'd be the perfect representation of us right now. But I gave that up. I gave up a lot of things for Olivia. It's like she doesn't even understand that, though. Place the glass where the vase once was and lay it down on the couch once more. This is our life now. It has been our life for so long. I don't know whether this life is, where this life is going to take us. That's with that final horrifying thought that I drift into a dreamless sleep. There it is, guys. That fucking sucks. At least this one comes with music. I mean, it's not a snoot ending too, but it still hurts. Yeah, it's a bitter ending, Nario. Yeah, most people are living through ending two right now, yeah? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Good news is it's only up from here, guys. The story yeah, the storyboards were always there. Except in ending one, I think. Actually, no, two was more concept. This is like, two, or three was concept. Two is, well, no, we got pictures here. I think these don't show up in ending one, though. Yeah, E2 is kind of sad and pathetic, yeah. We've all hit rock bottom. Well, we hit rock bottom two days ago. One of these days I'll play Dim Sum's game up here. I know he's got like Fang in his game his skating game, but I'm hoping he adds like Olivia just for the hahas. It's not as bad, but it makes me angry, yeah. It's a tough life. Ending two of four. Oh, one more to go tomorrow. Um, I'm going to try and see if we can do a post stream here. I downloaded a game I kind of don't like, but I want to play with an old, uh, a friend I haven't played in a while with, uh, on the channel. He, he has been on the channel, but 
Not in a while. Oh, he's not online. All right, I gotta go now. See, yep. Thanks for coming in, Zen. Hope you have a good night. Yeah, that one was a bummer ending, doggo. Man, I can't wait for ending four. That one's gonna be a real treat. I'm gonna do my best not to cry. <laughs> Don't make fun of me if I cry, guys. Clear some messages out here. You two, Pork you in the chat. Good night. Yep. Mary the Gator ending. Yes, she will be mine. I can treat her right. Sadly, I might not be as bad as Inko, but I messed up a tad. We have all messed up, Caleb. I've messed I've messed up my own personal Olivia, but I don't want to get into that story. It's funny because she was disabled too. She was an artist and she was deaf. And I'm not going to power level any more than that. And I will go on by saying I another power level is I've dated my own fang too, and that one I ruined. Oh, he's on. It's all good as long as you're trying to get better. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I've been... <laughs> I mean, I've been single for so long, though, but that's more of a personal choice. I haven't been looking. I feel this world is just changing for the worst, and... I don't know. Just, it's, it's not worth it, in, in my opinion. I mean, it may be worth it for you guys. Go get them, but... I think my chances have just come and gone, and I'm not sad about it. I got to experience the stuff, and, you know, I'm okay with my position. I'm sorry if that sounds, like, really stupid or whatever. <laughs> I don't mean to sound sad. chat just glitched or something the chat die hello or the chat oh, let me check YouTube I've been ending three at one point and sadly ending two in high school. Yeah, it's, it's felt like ending two for, for me, but I'm not, I've, I've come to terms. Everyone has their own battles. Yeah. Sometimes you don't win them and it's not about winning or losing. It's just how you get back on your feet. I could probably take out the spoiler. Well, no, I'm keeping them on for ending four. No spoilers, guys. Ending one, Olivia goes into a comatose. Yeah, we know that. And ending two, she becomes the the wine ant. God, that that I I gotta scrub that image out my mind.
Oh, excuse me. Jeez. Well, at least I'm not reading anymore. <laughs> How much do we got? Uh, we'll go for 15 minutes and then we'll wrap it up here. Get another game started. Neither 15 minutes or whenever chat truly dies. Ending two, Liv is out of the rut, but Inko is still toxic, and he get, she gets into another rut. Speaking of, will ending four stream bo be both the ending and extras? Yeah, because it's the last one we're doing. Ending three, Inko grows up, but Liv never gets over her first rut. Well, she starts to. Ending three does have does feel like it could get more positive. Both end up, and um, ending four both grow up, and it ends well. <laughs> she failed because she didn't draw, draw furry. She should have started that streaming career, dude. Ending 3 Olivia was on something for sure. Should have started taking commissions for furry porn. She would have made it. So when ending four comes and goes, are you got uh, how many of you are just gonna be gone? <laughs> I mean, I do have one more one more uh, visual novel up my sleeve, but I feel like after all is said and done, a lot of you are gonna go dormant. I mean, I appreciate having all of you in the chat. You guys are good, most of you. <laughs> Staying. Thank you, Caleb. Suffering achieved. Yeah, we're done suffering. Tomorrow, or not tomorrow, Fang Friday, where we wrap it all up. <clears throat> and depending on how I feel, maybe Saturday we'll jump into that new visual novel. I might stay. I mean, I'm not much of a visual novel guy, but Snoot, Snoot really won me over. I wanted to get to this as soon as possible and get all this, uh, get all this into me before spoilers start dropping left and right. I can't process huge chats. Well, this one wasn't as bad as I thought. You guys aren't that big. I mean, for as like as high as the chat or the viewers go, I'd say for as like there's a hundred people in watching. There's probably about ten, ten or so of you chatting, and not even that fast. That's pretty much what the endings are so far. I like Snoot 3 ending for Fang. Yeah, that one was bittersweet. I have to do two streams for ending 4. It's a long one. Really? We'll see. I'm staying. I came here for the content first. But you're a pretty neat dude. Yeah, I come, come for the gator, stay for the porcupine. And I'll probably... I'll, I'll keep uh, mods for the game in mind. I'll do some modding. Granted, they're, they're not, like, evil mods or whatever. I think I'd go crazy if I was, like, a visual novel streamer, like, full-time. <laughs> yeah, you're an okay G-man. <laughs> G-man. I'd like to think I'm okay. I know I sell myself short sometimes. Dang, 40 likes on the stream. That's crazy. 250 hour long VNs. Jeez, I'd die. I'd most likely be a Damien route mod. If it if it's like if it's like the read mod, I don't know if I'd be. <laughs> I don't know if I'd stream that. You're sure bringing in the subs as though you're... Yeah, I'm almost a 400. I've literally... I've almost doubled my sub count, and that's crazy. Though I'm pretty sure by the... By when every, everything's said and done, I'm, those subs are probably going to go a little downwards. I mean, I, I can't... I can't oblige anyone to stay. Yeah, like... 
You are your own people, and I can't get upset at that. It's fair. But at least I got to taste the good times while they lasted. I'll pop in from time to time. All right, great, greedious. Love to see more of you guys over too. I'm sure there's there's many other games I'll be playing. I do want to get more into retros. Hug that gator too. I'm sure caveman. Well, caveman on. You know what? I'd better see you when their next game drops. What is it? Exit six six five. If I don't see if I don't see your butts in the chat, I'm gonna be disappointed. Because I'm playing that game. I'll be checking out the Snoop Guru. Alright, you, you heading off for the night? Wildcard Jack? Probably will keep more coming as the visual novels, RPGs like Undertale. Well, uh, my friend Blaze already streamed Undertale. I do have a stream from a bootleggish Undertale called, uh, what was it? Mordili, I think it was called. I, I wasn't really impressed. It was like a glorified walking simulator. But if, if you're into that stuff, check out that stream. I. I kind of like just lost it at near the end of it because it felt like it dragged on for a little too long. But if you're into that stuff, I'd I'd recommend checking that stream out. I'm waiting for the Snoop game too. I wonder how many people will be on Ending Four stream. Will it top 200 viewers? That I'd have to see. It was a pleasure to be on this journey, and I will miss these types of interactions. Yeah, we might we might strike. We might strike lightning twice. Who knows? As I said, I have another visual novel uh, coming up. I want to play. And it does feature the Gator Girl. Albeit like a, a little less quality Gator Girl. But the, the spirit is there. She makes a little cameo. I don't know what under rail is. A mod a snoop game the sex update okay i can't legally speaking i can't stream that on youtube i can but it'd, it'd only be once any reason you look at snoop game encore or certain mods for it yeah i forgot snoop game encore is coming out i might stream that even though i'm, I'm not like completely on board with the concept i will stream it There's already an update. It's another mod. What do you mean? Oh, the other mod is the Encore. I thought Encore was its own, like, EXE file or some shit. Miguel go to horny jail. I don't blame him. There are pages for that. Oh, the other YouTubes that... <laughs> The other YouTube that's orange. Do I really want to sell my soul to go there? I like to I like to believe I'm at least trying to be classy here. Come on, guys. <clears throat> and that's what rule 34 sites are for, not YouTube. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna sell my soul for that. If, if there's that kind of mod, I'm playing that privately. I'll I'll let you know what I think about it though. It's very uncomfortable, I'll tell you that much. Wait, there's already an update for... Wait, it's very uncomfortable. And was really unneeded. What do you mean? Uh, did I... Did something just, like, fly by my head? YouTube for classy streams. Orange YouTube for cultured, sh cultured streams. I don't think you guys want to know that side of me. Trust me. I am I am quite the cultured person, as the, you would say. 
Are we talking about how? Yes, we're talking about the hub. The mod. What mod are we talking about, though? Like, is there literally Snoop Game sex mod that we're talking? What are we talking about? This, this, you're scaring me, guys. I don't think the Encore is a mod, though. Greedious. I think the Encore is its own thing. Like, it'll be... You'd be launching that in its own little program. No, never mind. Corn Hub. Let's move on. I'm sorry. You, you gotta... You gotta know that I'm kind of retarded. In some sense. Sometimes you gotta hold my hand. No homo. <laughs> Farmer's favorite corn hub. <laughs> so did most of you come from 4chan too with Snoop Game? Are you all those tourists I've been hearing about? I'm looking at the time, there's only two minutes left. I have to wrap this up soon. I'm just going to go play Fortnite to clear my head. That's fair. Fortnite will help you do that. I hope you get that victory royale. And make sure to slap Vinny for me. Hey, poor, can you at least be glad that you're not... Is not smart? Yeah, I I don't know where I'd be if I was in Go. I, I was stupid growing up, but I smarted up real fast. <laughs> I don't run my mouth. I don't... Well, I am still kind of stupid, but I'm not, like, quite retarded. <laughs> well, suddenly, I'm not from 4chan. Because I know that's where that's where Snoot started, so... Gotta find the real OGs out there. I got hooked when a video told me about it. The stream was suggested to me by YouTube. Well, I mean, not like... Like, were you guys originally Snoot fans from... 4chan when when all that meme started for snoop game when 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 it was just a sh the school shooter meme you know i've always seen that snoop game i came to gator from the steam demos if you can believe it didn't know jack about 4chan or snoop that's fair because i i was i was on the chans uh 2021. I was there when it was a V thread and constantly V threaded and then banned and then tossed into trash and was stickied for a few months and then yeah. Now we have Bang Friday, Snoot Saturday, and Wani Wednesday. And remember guys, never go to B. <laughs> Aren't you breaking the first rule? We don't talk about B. Learned Snoop game from well, Goodbye Volcano High release. I know Nario is probably from the Chans. A fellow uh, Burfag. A cultured individual. But I was on Fortune during my university years. Not anymore since, well, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> I occasionally browse the chans. I'm more of a lurker, if anything. I came from Snoot. I don't know squat. But I came from Snoot. What's a bee? <laughs> no talk about bee. Ah, I bumped the mic. Sorry, guys. Damn straight. I'm going to probably have to wrap it up here, guys. I really enjoyed... Uh, well, <laughs> I say enjoy. I enjoy you guys being in my streams, but... The sending was, was something else. So. We will see better days on Friday. Have a good night. Oh, before I sign off. I'm definitely having another stream right away after this one. We're going to be playing some. Uh, what is it? Dark Tide. With a, a fellow porcupine friend of mine. 
So if you, you want to hang out and uh, still chat somewhere, I'll be over there shooting, shooting, uh, shooting something. So snoot and hug, snoot and hug until it's done. Thanks for the stream. Have a good night, everyone. Yep. Have a good night. And if you're if you're in the next stream, I'll see you there. And if not, have a good night.